Oh my goodness, Deroya leaking the entire expansion. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The actual what are you true, but the was just laying it all down. Uh, the true just, compensation. I just that, need the end of this. What? So yeah. what was the ending again, Inks? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not a partner, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. You're not a partner? No. Wait, what? No. Yeah, Inks is looking to reapply right now. How did yeah, that I'm gonna, happen? I'm gonna, I'm gonna reapply. I'm gonna see if they. They uh, want me to be a partner again. Did they kick you too? No, no, I quit. Oh, I mean, I kind of quit. Well, I, I okay. Let me rephrase. I didn't quit. I went on break. Oh, because I wasn't making content. It doesn't feel right to be a partner if you're not gonna make content. Hey, right. you wouldn't I, be I, the I, only one, right? No, I wouldn't. But I felt bad, so I, <laughs> I decided to like take a vacation or whatever, take a break. Fair. But now you're back with React content. Oh boy, yeah. He... <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I actually did make some content, not just React content, which is like fake content. I, I did actually make a couple of videos that were actual real videos. So, I mean, I felt yeah. good. You know. It's good. It's good stuff. But anyway, uh, to the point, it's tea time. That's right, guys. Another Wednesday tea time. Not scuffed at all. Ready to go. Uh, ready to be high energy. This time we're talking about legendary armory. And that's why, you know, you can probably see Mr. 0.0000008% here. Because I have to say, um, I, I was simultaneously disappointed but also amused when the compensation went out for the legendary armory. Because I kind of knew what your reaction would be. Um, so I was kind of just chuckling, going like, with Droy's like, what the fuck is this bullshit, right? You know, he's probably going crazy. He's probably flaming right now. Then I see the I actually, tweets. I actually only yeah. turned on my PC because you wrote me on Discord. Like, check your email. And I, I saw I saw your reaction afterwards on, on stream because I, I wasn't watching. I was just like chilling about. <laughs> Apparently, all of my whispers got, well, tweeted out to or streamed out to everyone else. Hey, hi, everyone. Yes. We got my first first reaction. <laughs> yeah, we got the true first reaction there. It was big. I didn't intend that. Yeah, exactly. You know, now it's oh, happened. Cheers. Now it's all out there. But anyway, so the legendary armory has come out. And for those who don't know, the legendary armory is the ability to use legendary gear on all of your build templates, on all of your characters, anytime you want, as long as you have enough of them. And it is a very well implemented feature, and I believe uh, Brazil. You you actually think that it is good, right? I think you know this is the first time you'll have anything to, good to say about legendary armor or legendary gear in general. Would that be an accurate assessment of uh, of your opinion on the matter? Uh, yeah, I think overall, I think it's incredibly positive and incredibly good. Uh, but there are some things about it that are a little bit frustrating. I think like if I had to give it a like one to ten rating, I'd probably give it an eight out of ten. Um, honestly, I think eight out of 10 is very fair. The other two points that I would take away from it would be that like, let's be real. Um, if you want to play multiple builds with multiple stat sets and multiple weapons, even if you want to play, like in my case, if you want to play berserkers, like thief in world versus world, but you want to have a build for dagger pistol, a build for dead eye and a build for like sword dagger, you're not going to do that without build templates because every time you swap the weapons, you have to change the stats around. And like, it's, it's just very messy that that happens. You have to change the stats. Like you have to drag the weapon back into your inventory. You have to click on it, pick the stats you want. You have to put the sigils and infusions all back on it. And it's very frustrating unless you have build templates where you just set them all in the slot and forget about it. And I refuse to ever buy equipment templates or build templates. I won't do it. That's why I have like 30 characters because they're they're all just different builds that I can just switch to because I'm not going to buy build templates. Um, and also, like another thing that is I don't know, frustrating. Wait, before before yeah, you yeah, go yeah. on to point number two, because I just want to address that one real yeah. quick. Because yeah. um, I, I, I 100% agree with you. Uh, and I agree with you two years ago when I was talking about the same issue and everyone else was telling me oh just use ascended weapons now everyone else is complaining about it welcome to the club everyone this is what the purple in every hole feels <laughs> like it, it's it's constantly kind of getting fucked by the the little things it's like on, honestly been like this for years and no one's addressed it until everyone's hit by it thank you everyone all right go yeah. ahead sorry Chris. right but yeah oh well but the issue is really build templates though 
Yeah, yeah. build templates being monetized is the problem. And legendary armor kind of like feeding you and dragging you towards buying more of them. Incentivizes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say dragging you towards more of them. Incentivizing is too nice of a word. Because legendary armor, to my surprise, was not monetized, but it's kind of been <laughs> indirectly monetized because they're like, oh, build templates here. You well, go. and also just yeah. buying buying legendaries with gold too. No, I, I think yeah. this, this is a really important topic, a really interesting one. I think this is this is one that Daroya can definitely speak to. Essentially, this entire mess, the reason why the legendary armory even exists is because of build templates. Like the reason that we're even in this situation is because that they added this system and it kind of made legendary gear pointless, right? Like, because I remember this back in the day, right? You know, Daroya was on the purple in every hole quest, right? He, it made far too many legendary runes and sigils, like nine sets of legendary armor, right? All the legendary weapons for all the characters. And obviously, um, this was great. It was like, oh, nice. You know, I, I've got my full legendary gear. Hooray. And then build templates came along. And it was like, oh, wait, now my legendary gear is actually doesn't even do anything, right? Because ascended gear is kind of better because all of the item, the, basically the, the, you know, the inventory space you would save with legendaries, that's now been completely made redundant by ascended. So then they had to buff legendary gear in order to compensate for the fact they power crept the game and basically put money into it with microtransactions on build and equipment templates. And then that's when they had the armory. And the armory is essentially completely hamstrung by the fact that build templates even exist yeah yeah that, that's uh, in essence that's the one thing that feels the worst to me is that it definitely feels like it's an extension of the already faulty system uh which is the build templates which kind of just like yeah as you said it, it hamstrings it, it hamstrings it from the uh from the release of it which is kind of weird um and it's it's one of those odd situations where they essentially have to go back and redo the build template situation or hit whole system in order for the legendary armory to really come to its I mean true true form. Um, but that's not that's definitely not going to happen. So we're in this like weird state of like yeah we got this great uh, quality of life feature like amazing quality of life feature but it's built on top of a really really shitty one. <laughs> um, so it all, it, it just feels kind of, I'm glad that they went with it like this though, because uh, it, I mean, it, it should be obvious to anyone that, uh, it, it was meant to be more than just an extension. It, it was definitely meant to be, I mean, like another paid feature and they, they must've gone back on some of their, uh, some of their ideas for the legendary, uh, armory, um, when they got that whole backlash from the. Well, you think template. so? You think it was supposed, it was oh, going yeah? to be monetized? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I think that's the only reason why it took so long to get out. I think it was like near completion when the whole shitstorm just kind of flooded them. Like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? Um, and they essentially just went and re reworked the entire thing, so there was no paywalls behind it. And I mean, honestly, kudos to Arena for doing that. If that's the actual thing that that uh, that did it, um, amazing. Um, but yeah, I I feel like it's. It's a weird situation. Yeah. Interesting. What, what, what do you think they were going to... What do you think uh, other features they were going to add? What could what more could they have added that they could have sold? Or do you think they were just like sold slots? More slots in the arts? or like, <laughs> yeah, upgrades to the armory in some capacity. Oh, now you can have uh, two weapons of the same type. Or uh, now you can have a Gen 2 legendaries in there, like completely locking out the... Gen 2 or Gen 3 legendaries from even getting unlocked or like something stupid like that. But it's like, it's obvious to me that that was definitely going to happen. Wow. Um, I mean, we all thought it. Everyone, everyone thought it was going to be a fit paid feature. I feel like I'm the so, only so person who so didn't think no that. no one trusted like, them. <laughs> yeah, the, and I think this is, a, this is a really interesting thing actually, because no one did trust Anet. And no? uh, I, I'm curious, do you think that people are going to trust arena net more is the armory a good step to recover that uh kind of faith in the in the con from the consumer in the company do you think because of course they didn't do that and you know they delivered the feature as promised and you know you might even see them iterate on things you know they we saw them talking about how the fact that they are aware that people want to hide aurora and vision and stuff right so they might look into that at a later date but i don't know like i think that uh, you know you know I think ArenaNet is kind of like, they're in two phases right now. They're making the expansion, 
But I think what they're going to try and use the next kind of six to eight months or however long it's going to be. And they're going to use that time to try and actually make people believe them again, right? And make people actually think that ArenaNet is an actual good company. Uh, yeah, because it seems they're on the on yeah. the hunt for goodwill. Honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. They like want lately, the goodwill. Alliances, all, right? DX12, DX11. Uh, exactly. Yeah. All of those blog posts, all of those like follow up ideas, and like, yeah, we're listening, we're iterating. It, it's definitely a sign of like, yeah, we want to we want to wave the flag that we have new leadership and things are going to change. And obviously, it's, I mean, is it really going to change that much? I mean, who knows? It, 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 we might be six months down the line and another scandal happens and they close up like a clam <laughs> again. I mean, because that's, that's been the cycle every single time. They open up, and, which is amazing. I, I commend them for that and they should keep doing it. They open up, they talk about everything, and then something happens, slam. They shut the door and we're locked out for the next year and then repeat the cycle. I mean, I, I, I have faith that they can do it, but it really takes balls to like keep on doing it even when the community gets a little bit toxic. Because we, I mean, shit will happen. It always does. We're, there's always going to be the next scandal. Let's be real. <laughs> I look dead inside? I'm not. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my resting face. Inks is running off GPU power. Yeah, he's running off Bitcoin right now or Ethereum. Yeah. He cannot possibly be dead inside. He's buying <laughs> loads of armory. He's buying loads of uh, equipment templates with all of that Bitcoin money. So like Inks is, he's good to go, man. Like he is, uh, he's live. He's more alive than all of us put together. So, <laughs> someone said earlier about it being account wide. I think if it was, if it was account wide, I would consider buying the templates. But on a per character basis, I just. I don't yeah. need it that badly. Yeah. I have, I have, and not everybody does, but I have so many extra character slots that I don't use that it's easier for me. It's literally easier for me to make another character than it is to buy, uh, you know, uh, a slot so that I can run a different build. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, and that's the, one of the main problems with build templates. I mean, not to stick on the build templates topic so much. It's just that it just feels like a, it just feels bad, right? Like, you know, you know, you don't really want to use them, like, unless you really have to. Like, car this is, this is the, like, you got to be careful. Like, do, you guys, do you guys know how much trouble Wooden Potatoes got in with his chat, like, from having this take, basically? Like, he basically said this, like, you know, I, I didn't yeah, hear. his take, well, this is what, this is when they actually came out, when the templates came out. He was streaming and he was talking about how, oh, you know, Build templates are fine. Just buy character slots, basically, right? That was that was kind of like the gist of it. And the, the, the chat, they were <laughs> not happy. The solution. Okay, right? Like the chat were, they were not amused. Okay, the debate ensued, and you know there was a there was even a Reddit thread, I believe. Okay, there was uh, there was anger, right? Uh, and <laughs> I think I kind of remember this. Yeah, great take, golden take. Yeah, golden take, exactly. Uh, but you know we're certainly moving along in the right direction here with the legendary armory, I think actually. And I, I really hope they fix the the one thing I really do hope they fix because I'm I have limited optimism for if they're really going to address build templates. I think that's probably a feature that's pretty set in stone. Yeah, uh, it you ain't know, happening. Like, it, it's not really going to go gonna anywhere. They're going to keep on polishing that turd. If, yeah, I mean, <laughs> might might not even do that. I mean, they'll just it, leave it stinking in the sun. I mean, how has this I, happened? If okay. there's anything, I feel. I I feel like I'm justified being sour about its build templates. Uh, the rest of everything, like I, I might sound a little bit uh, bitter right now, but it's really just the build templates because legendary armory, it's great, it's awesome. Uh, like yeah, but the build template that is that is a shit show. You know what? Like what could be the ultimate show of goodwill? They could make build templates account bound, like account wide. Everyone who's bought one, they could just convert all of those to be account wide. Or they could offer a refund on some number of them and just make it going forward so they're just account wide. So you can buy one and you can use it on every character and, you know, it's no big deal. It's not I think, like... I, I doubt any compensation will come for uh, for people that have bought it because it's more than 0.008% of the player base. And so well, it, it's too much work. I mean... Well, I don't know that... I would say that 0.008% of the player base is what bought build templates. Um, because just That's build templates I mean. in general, yeah, yeah, yeah. Build templates in general, I think, are something that they could just like resolve and fix, and people would love them for it. But like they did this with like the copper fed and silver fed salvage matics, 
whenever like the uh, account wide inventory <laughs> slots came out. Because like, I'm, <laughs> no, how, they how did. Many, how they many did. do you have? There's no they, compensation. I, what are you talking about? There was. If you emailed support, they would refund you the gems. I did that nine times. I did actually. I did it eighteen I did, times. I did, I did it eighteen twice. times I never, because I had I had ten of each. Goddamn! I did it twice and I got the same reply uh, both times. It's you already had your fun. Oh yeah, I told I, them. I, I told them. Nine. I told them that I was going to reverse the charge with my bank and to escalate my ticket, and they complied <laughs> real fucking fast. <laughs> I only ever bought one, so I I didn't have that problem. Smart move. <laughs> My, I, 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 I actually just got bigger. I, mean, I had that experience again recently. It was so ridiculously <laughs> painful. Like customer support about this game, like sometimes they are absolutely golden and they're just wonderful. And then like it feels like you have some like support staff that just honestly hate the players and are upset that they have to deal with anyone. Because like recently I bought like I, I accidentally bought like the heavy runic chess piece instead of like the medium one. And that is a huge investment in terms of strikes. And like my option was like, I could just spend a hundred gold and whatever, just have an extra one. Or I could grind strikes again for like two weeks straight. Or I emailed support and was like, Hey, look, um, I bought this thing on accident and like, could you replace it? They're like, yeah, we'll replace it for you. I was like, cool. I salvaged it already. If you like, you're just able to send me another one. They said, we can't replace it because you salvaged it and you got one mithril ore from it. Nice value. So I, 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 I told them to just go ahead and uh, I'm like, I'll just talk with my bank. It's fine. Like I bought gems the other day. It's cool. And they, they sorted me out. So like, it's, <laughs> it's, ridiculous that what? like you have to just like you have to have that conversation with someone so like i don't want to be an asshole but like when customer <laughs> support is is going to treat me they're going to say that my time in this game and my investment that i spent playing this game is not worth it then fuck them like holy shit wow Gee whiz. i mean i mean all of that over one mithril or over yeah. one mithril ore, it could have been completely <laughs> avoided. One I mean, mithril ore. Essentially, the compensation that I got for legendary armor. Was oh yeah, that's way more legendary armor. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, that one mithril ore is worth more than the than the chests I have sitting in my bank. How much you super curious? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, talk about like. So, eh. tell tell us a little bit about that. Like, tell us what you got. T what what did you get as compensation for the legendary armor? Armory, because uh, you already had I, a million sets, right? So, like, what did you yeah, get? Exactly. I got, I got, um, and this was actually too few. So, I've contacted customer support, um, but I got fifty-one uh, legendary caches and six. Uh, what are they called? The other ones with the weapons the or whatnot. No, no, no. So six for the legendary back pieces. The I had the six. Well, technically, I had seven. Uh, Warbringers, so that's six in excess. Um, Seven six warbringers. Too many. Holy yeah. shit! Um, <laughs> so my my question so, is, and those were properly compensated, but I'm still missing eighteen pieces, and I'm trying to go through this process with. It doesn't really matter for me, anyways. So I'm being really, really nice to the customer support. I'm being very patient because it, they seem very, very swamped right now. So I con contacted the customer support. I said, "Okay, could please." Could you either give me the missing chests or explain to me what the logic is behind the compensation? Like, is it a one-to-one -one thing? What's the what's the deal here? I mean, it should it, be, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I got this like weird uh, reply like twice in a row, which was like it was it was just a template. It was a, it was an email template, customer uh, support template that they just kind of send out. And I guess everyone more or less got hit with this. Every anyone contacting them regarding legendary armory um and so i was like okay could you please at least uh explain to me what what the thing is because they were saying like oh yeah you've been properly compensated we're closing this ticket and i was like okay cool but could you explain this to me um and they're like all right we'll we'll put you on hold for now and they replied to me like yesterday or something like could you send me like so many details about all the different things that i hadn't gotten compensations for um, so yeah, I, I think they're swamped, but I think a lot of people are trying to, trying to scam customer support right now for an extra legendary or two. Cause, uh, yeah, now's the time, I guess everyone's feeling. Well, so that was actually something that happened back in the day, um, with scamming support and legendaries. So I knew some, 
I knew more than one person that did this. And like, we're talking like probably like between five and 15 people. It's been a while where they would create a legendary, they would bind it and like get the skin in the wardrobe and they would contact support and say like, Hey, I made this legendary and I really wanted to sell it. But my little brother logged into my account. He logged on my computer and he yeah. soul bound it on accident. Could you help me out? And they're like, Oh yeah, no problem. Just destroy the weapon. We'll confirm that we destroyed it or you, you, you destroyed it and we'll just send you another one. So they would get the skin. It wouldn't have a legendary, but they would sell it. And this was like before, like the, I guess the wardrobe or any of that thing was a thing. It was like a long time ago, Yeah. but you can't do that anymore. Like, they're just going to say like, no, fuck you. Like, no. And so people are probably trying to do that right now. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Probably. They seem very, very stringent um, about anything. Or if like coming out with any details about it. And I, I understand why. I, I definitely do. So I'm not faulting them uh, at all. Yeah. But yeah, essentially, I got 51 chests of, um, well, to where I can choose a legendary armor piece or a legendary rune or sigil. Um, and I have all of it. And it's, I mean, I mean, it's like, do you think they should have added an option <laughs> for like six mystic mystic coins uh, or something? Coins. Not six, uh, but something like. I think they were very, very wary about giving actual gold compensation, and I understand why. Because I mean, even even if it's only a very very small margin of the the player population, giving actual gold to players is, yeah, I mean, it's a dangerous route to go down. Um, well, wouldn't you I, have I had the gold anyway, though? Good, wouldn't you have had the gold? Though, because I mean, I'd take the gold. Yeah, I mean, because right now all I have is something to ping and look cool. I mean, it's like. Eh. Well, like <laughs> let's 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 take let's take an example use... where you're not Deroyer or maybe Enco, mm -hmm. um, and the like they're gonna give you another legendary piece of armor because you made two yeah. helmets or something, right? So like that's pretty expensive compensation than to give you X number of Mystic coins or something. Like I don't really think it's that terrible. No, I'm honestly I I think I think for the vast majority of players hit by this getting this compensation is actually really good. I think most players are really happy with it. Uh, I think it's more just like the, well, the 0.8% of the 0.8% like me or uh, the nine other people uh, above me on the leaderboard um, that have more legendaries than me. I think we're the only ones that will really feel like, well, that sucks. Yeah, um, I, I was really hoping they would add some kind of like, secret title right you know like, yeah you know, same purple in every hole I there you go. That there's a, in there's every a title hole. or even just a title that says uh 0 0.008 I, yeah. percent I, I want that <laughs> I yeah that, yeah, that. I mean, <laughs> but it, but in the end it's like it's it's just another i guess it's just a an i'm special title and it, it's just that's just i don't know i don't know it seems yeah. kind of lame to me I'm not gonna lie well, what would you what would you want? What would have been good for you? Like just I gold? mean, that would have been the thing that I want. I want oh, okay. the I'm special tag. Yeah, yeah okay. I, yeah, yeah. I, I want a badge that just says tenth special. That's that's what I want. Um, but yeah, essentially, that's that's yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I wanted in the end. Um, wow, so you don't know. Uh, now, I think I think I I I was so um. I, I'd really hit the acceptance stage of that whole grief period, like uh, grief cycle, honestly. Because it was like, it's been 14 months since I had this like crushing blow of like, oh no, all of my achievements will be taken away from me. And it's like, I kind of got through all of that. And I just kind of like, yeah, okay. It, nothing's going to come from this because there's, there's never been any case of like mass compensation for any changes that they've made. I was 100% sure that they wouldn't do anything or give anyone anything. And then we got something. And it was like, oh, okay. Here's a question. What is, um, now, right now in the game, if you made a second, like, let's say, legendary piece of armor, would they mail you a box again? Uh, no, I don't think you can actually make them. Like, uh, make an extra version. Oh, okay. I think if you go to click craft on the mystic forge it won't let you actually um do the thing um yeah well i have a question what if going forward they add gen 3 legendaries to those boxes they won't and and that i would know be mega OP if they did. it says yeah. in the title you can only pick from like this specific so uh the weapon chest says 
pick legendary Gen 1 weapons. Or, like, pick legendary weapons from XYZ. It's, they're very specific in the language that they, they use. Can you so not it, pick Gen 2s from it? Nope. Really? Yep. So, uh, there's that. It's interesting. So, Gen 3 will not be added. Gen 2s would be bound anyway, which is fine if you wanted an extra copy of something. But Gen 1s you can sell for gold. Yeah, but they say account bound on use. I haven't, I mean, clicked uh, on any okay. of them. So interesting. It just, I just assume uh, they're account bound. It looks, it looks like they thought of the loopholes. Yep. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they seem like a solid box, honestly. It's like, yeah, a, a well crafted idea of compensation to like silence the, the idiots. Um, What's yeah. the point of picking the same wow. one? Well, if you wanted to, if you need an extra dagger, dagger, or. Yeah, honestly, it can be really good to have like double of some things. Like, yeah, dagger, dagger, like, uh, like Ink said, or axe, yeah, that's... axe, or yeah. uh, there's like a, a build for uh, a scourge as well that uses two different war horns. So, I mean, there used to be a ranger build where it was like shortpo, shortpo. So you mm -hmm. need two shortpos. Like, there are some use cases for that stuff. Definitely. That's really that's really frustrating to me. And another thing that is kind of frustrating, but like. The legendary sigils and runes are so incredibly expensive. I honestly don't know why they made you craft six instead of just making one. Like oh, they could have made hard. the. Now it's it's, it's like three thousand gold for a full set of runes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which so, is that's like same. why couldn't you just make one rune and one sigil and take it out like six and four times respectively? Like that would have been because yeah, seven times because it's just like. 3,000 golds for runes is, like, that's that's really a lot. But like, the that's... reality is, like, you never have to get any other rune Yeah, ever it's very powerful. It's very it's... strong. And, and think the, the, about the some thing runes. Is, like, I've, I've been cleaning up my account after this mm. legendary armory, because I had a lot of alts that were just, like, stashing like, yeah, 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 the yeah. gear all over the place. And I'm just going on a salvage spree because it, I literally, there's not a single character on my account that will ever have to use an ascended piece or a rune or sigil or anything. I just have it all. It's, it's such a massive quality of life, like beyond anything I could have ever imagined that they made. So 3000 gold seems like such a low, low price point in my, in my opinion for something that massive. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's. I think. I think it is very strong. I think about. It, I mean, this is a very extreme example, but tormenting runes are something like ten gold right now. So every time you use legendary runes, um, you get sixty gold from doing torment. Like a set of tormenting runes will be sixty gold when you apply those. So you know you don't actually have to use them that many times. Like legendary runes are actually, if you think about it, maybe some of the more reasonably priced stuff. Like you'll actually get value out of it. And in terms of honestly, the legendary armory in general is insane value. Like think how much um, gold it would take to buy ascended gear for a full character. Every time you do make a new character, you can fill out an entire build template or even multiple build templates for zero cost, including runes and sigils. Now runes and sigils have actually gone down in price a little bit. You know four sigil isn't what it once was anymore uh unfortunately um uh, but yeah like, a lot of things are dropping in price a little bit but even so like legendary armory is insane value i think it's one of the, the biggest value things you can have and it is supposed to be this ultimate end game progression as well I and mean, it is supposed to be this absolute pie in the sky for a lot of players and on that note by the way Deroy, i don't know if you've um been talking to enko actually about this but I have just got some very interesting intel sent to me on Discord. Would you like to hear what you might be able to get? Although it is probably still quite useless to you, but it will certainly be better for some other people. Uh, it looks like people who have an insane amount of legendaries will actually, and I can show it on stream actually, um, people will, will be getting this very, this very extreme, people who are like very, very extreme here, like will have the ability to have like a points system. So basically for every excessive thing that you don't need, you get one point and you'll be, actually, you'll be able to buy stuff for points. For example, um, you'll be able to buy a legendary eternal coffer for Wait, eight where, points. Where, where are we talking about? Where, where, where is this happening? Oh, hang on, Chuck, hang on. I'm, I'm, gonna link, I'm, gonna I'm link so it confused because I can't I'm really link see. Yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I'm going to link it in this chat as well. Hang on one sec. Okay, here you go. Right, um, boom. Take a look at this. 
So, um, a legendary eternal cough. No, it's not an idea, guys. This is confirmed. This is confirmed. This is Enko talking with support. I've just got intel on this. Uh, and the, for example, if you, you'll be able to trade eight of your sigils, and there was eight of your excess things, right? Because you've got, you've got 51 points. That's so basically. good. This was actually so, the one thing that I was going to bring to the table today. So yeah. Like, oh, I would love for it to just be one chest that you could pick and it, they, yeah. they would have different costs. This it, is essentially it. It looks like the things that are on Damn. offer here, you have a legendary eternal coffer, which is a gen two. So you're able to pick any gen two. Uh, legendary trunk. I think you already have those, right? I think, yeah, you already have legendary yeah. trunks. That's like the armor ones. Uh, yeah, there's exactly. also the, what's this? Legendary, what's legendary coffer? Uh, do you have legendary coffers? I think that, no, that I've actually, got, I've that got might a cash you... and a trunk. Or yeah. caches and trunks. Yeah, so there are a few, uh, there are a few items here as well. So there are a few things you can get. You can get legendary reliquary, which is any, oh wow, that, yeah, that's any, dude, yeah, you see, legendary reliquary is any um, gen one, including Aurora Vision Coalescence and so on. That is very interesting, actually. Legendary coffer. Um, uh, legendary I'll be saving coffer, these yeah. for gen three then, I guess. Yeah, well, I know, I think. Well, I'm not. Yeah, you, well, you might be able to trade in. It probably won't be. I'm not. I'm not sure they'll let you trade in for that, right? No, but no, no. I'm not sure you can do that stuff. But yeah, there are going to be actually options. This is actually confirmed from support there uh, as some additional compensation. So you'll have 51 points. Bravo, Arena. And you'll be able to have no link. Listening and iterating. I appreciate. Look, that. I'll I'll link all the items, guys. I'll link all the items. Like these are the things. Um, these are the things. Okay, fine. I'm linking. I'm linking. Them. These are the things, guys, that you'll be able to tr uh, have a, have a trade basically. Right, um, you'll be able to have those things, and each legendary thing, right, um, is going to give you one point. So Gen One, you get one extra point. Uh, each legendary rune um, that you have extra is one point. Each legendary sigil is one point, and then each, you know, legendary, you know, item armor or whatever is also one point. So basically, Deroy, you'll have fifty-one points, or maybe actually a bit but, more. But how does but how does this work? So do you trade the the trunks in for a point? I believe just... if you if you contact support, you can say, "All right, I want three of those, right?" And then you you know you have to do some mental arithmetic right. to to figure out where you're at there as well. So that's yeah, that's it. Let me check okay. my email if they if support has yeah. gone back to me. Yeah. And also, yeah, it, oh, it, does, it does yeah, it does yeah. appear that also there was a, a Reddit post actually with uh, with uh, again Enco trying to get in touch about this. It does appear that they miscounted runes and sigils too, so they'll probably send you some more addition. You'll get more points oh, and did... more things. Sorry uh, to Arena Net Support. I just uh, got a, an update here. Thank you for providing the screenshots. We have been able to determine that you were not sent full compensation. We have sent you two legendary coffers and one legendary cash. You should have to see those in your mail. Thank you. I appreciate that. Boom. There you go. Arena Net has redemption arc. Yo. Redemption arc is kicking in. There we go. What is this about? Basically, there has been some disputes about the way the compensation has been dealt with, particularly for very extreme users of legendary armor. Uh, essentially, the compensation you get for having loads of legendary items is more legendary items. Now, this is actually great, as we talked about. This is great it. if you haven't... Sentence. If you haven't filled, you know, if you haven't filled out your legendary armory, that's great. The trouble is, though, what if you already have? What if you actually have so many legendary items that no matter how many legendary items they give you, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference because you already have all of them, right? And, you know, obviously that's a very extreme example, but there are a few people. <laughs> there are a few people like that in the game, okay? It's, uh, yeah, it's Deroy. Deroy and, like, two other people. Yeah, because it's very, it's very I don't extreme, have all right? the Gen 2 weapons. Oh really? Well, you actually yeah, you might be well, able to get them now. now. Yeah, you can now. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be able to trade them in. Wait, do you do you have like I don't um, have the I don't have the dagger. Do you have four of every? Do you have four of all the one-handed ones? Uh no. Oh no. You're exposed. Boom. So that, you need to I, you need to I get more. Still weapons. Feel that. Yeah, you got to <laughs> fill that up. Yeah, so you can have four swords on one build. Okay, so your armory is not. I want. There's got to be someone who has the armory complete, right? Completely complete. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Eternal okay. coffers, nice. Yeah, Doroya is a casual. Okay, oh, you know, you know, there is one thing that I am actually a bit disappointed about with Armory. Like, why is there not actually like a hidden title for that? Okay, that's what I want to know. Like, surely you have like yeah. a hidden title for or, or, or something like that for actually completing. You know, it doesn't have to have AP, but it probably should. You know, like, you give it fifty AP why just not? to piss off all no, the AP hunters. Because yeah, the... screw. Come on. Wow. It's it, the it, ultimate goal. It's the it, ultimate goal. Give them AP. Give them a title. Let them feel. Title. Like the title flakes. should be purple too. 
like that blue one yes. that everybody got for right. watching yeah, that exactly. stream. Legendary it should say, title. It, I mean, should say yes. it should say valued customer and it should be <laughs> <laughs> I'd take it. Legendary oh player. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> yep. the, the thing is, like, ha have they done any of those um, different color titles since the blue one? I was, no, that's the only one. I don't think so. Yeah. Do you think maybe they just don't like them, though? I, I'm, what, what one was that for? Was that Extra Life? Yeah, yeah Extra yeah, Life. Extra yeah. Life. yeah. It's kind of an interesting thing, actually, because, you know, what I would like, you know, this is a bit off topic here. We're kind of diverging away here. But I think this would be a really good way to, like, change some of the reward structures a bit. For example, you could, you know, if you win, if you win the monthly AT, you could get, like, a golden one. Like, you know, a golden best of the best. And if you come second, you could have a, you know, a silver best of the best. A bit like Guild Wars 1, right? In Guild Wars 1, you could have the different um, colored uh, cape trims. And that's probably maybe a little bit less likely to happen in Guild Wars 2, uh, you know, considering the way capes are generally acquired in the game. But I don't know, I think Honestly, that could be kind of cool, like right? That's a, that's a completely missed trick on Arena's behalf so far. Because, like, they definitely should be doing that. People will be going absolutely nuts about different colored titles. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Legendary yeah, I, titles. I think it's, it's, a, it's, titles, it's a pretty cool piece of technology, right? That you can do that, have like different colored titles. It would be kind of fun, I think. But I guess maybe it just, it, maybe the maybe people didn't like them. I don't know. What do you, you know what? Let's ask the chat. Let's ask the chat, okay? The chat is more concerned about Deroira coming back. I mean, like, believe me, we all are, okay? Like, you know, Hell yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, what do you guys think about the different color titles? Like, maybe everyone hates them. But we just don't know. We just don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it is definitely a bit of a, a missed trick there as well. But yeah, sad to see there's no hidden thing there uh, for all of the really, really crazy armory people out there as well. Uh, but I mean, I guess that kind of just about does it for the legendary armory. Is there anything we missed about the armory? It's pretty good. I like it, the legendary it's good. armory. It, it, eight it out entirely, of ten. yeah, it, it's eight out of ten. I, I'd say that. Yeah. And also, it entirely uh, devalues the value of uh, what are they called? Uh, transmutation charges. Oh yeah, I spent I spent such an five thing. five hours retransmuting all of my characters. Five yeah. hours. I spent like half a day as well. It was just oh I God. spent no time at all because I don't care about any of that. Wow. Yes. Wait, that's fake news, Inks. <laughs> Inks, this is this is bullshit, bro. Like I remember actually go I was watching an MMO Inc. stream. I believe you were in World vs. World at the time. You were roaming uh near the camp just above the worm, actually on Alpine Borderlands. And uh, you actually gave us the full rundown on how you actually had different infusions on different weapons, so that when your character swapped oh, weapons, he changes yeah. color. Explain yeah, that, Inks. Well, I, I used to have that, but that's not... You don't need uh, transmutation charges for that. You just yeah. need infusions. That's the Fashion Wars, Inks. You're exposed. Well, You're into I, that stuff. Sure, yeah. okay. But I, I just use whatever skin that they give you. I'm not... <laughs> It's not real fashion wars. That's infusion wars. It's totally different. It's not the same thing. Totally okay. Different. Well, that does make sense. Yeah, that's what. And that I'm not another... even good at that. I'm not even good at that because I don't have like the bee and the ice. They've added so many. Jeez, the ice skin and the red skin and the blue skin and there's so many different infusions now. It's crazy. Is that your goal to make your character as obnoxious as possible? Yes, and I also <laughs> wanted to drop FPS of other players around me when I walk on the screen. But um, with DX11 coming, I mean, Arena is crushing my dreams. It's because you've got all the play. GPUs, so no one else can they're, have them. So you can just, feel free to destroy just them. Destroying my content. The only thing I enjoy doing in game is ruining the experience for other people. So. <laughs> We're not here to ruin the game. We're here to ruin <laughs> your game. <laughs> Yeah, at the uh, <laughs> Arena Net Partner MMO Inks, by the way, guys, okay? Uh, you know, wants to get back into the partner program. He's just saying that the only thing he's, yeah, he enjoys in game is ruining other people's experience in Guild Wars 2. I mean, like, that is, uh, that's a good clip right there, guys, okay? Like, I think we're going to put that on the application, uh, so. Actually, that that would be, um, someone in chat just brought up the whole uh, New World Eating 3090s. That would be a good tag for End of Dragons. Doesn't kill your 3090. <laughs> Well, the but, problem with that straight away is if you can just instantly tell if you've ever tried to play Skyrim with grass mods. There's so much fucking foliage that interacts with like the wind and with players and stuff. Like that's the problem. They could just cut the foliage and the grass in half and it would immediately get better. That's the issue with that game. Like 100%. That's why. It's actually more the character models actually in New World to kind of segue off the nope. New World. 
You know, it is, it, it, it is. Seriously, when there's like 15 people on screen, FPS, it's gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Like, if, you, if you're on your own or with like a few people, it's actually okay. And I, well, just to kind of clarify uh, on the the gra on the on graphics card thing, is basically the EVGA cards are a bit scuffed, right? And they just burn out. Like, it's the, don't worry, your 3090 is safe with New World. Just if you have an EVGA one, make sure you limit your limit frame rate. It. Otherwise, yeah. it will literally die, guys, okay? It will, well, it's because it ran, because it ran at uh, uncapped FPS. If you have no, this actually was a really big problem. Uh, fun fact, guys, this is actually a really big problem with StarCraft 2 as well. Um, there was an issue with StarCraft 2 where the loading screen, or rather the, the login screen, um, Blizzard let it run at completely uncapped FPS, so it would actually push your GPU to 100% utilization. So if you left your machine um, running the login screen for StarCraft 2, it would literally overheat and brick your PC, right? Because it will be running the it will be running the login screen at like a thousand FPS and just completely destroy your uh, entire that's machine. A feature. So yeah, that's a feature right there, guys. Okay, so don't worry, it's not just Amazon. Uh, it is uh, other games have so. And actually, this is kind of like a common thing. Actually, like this is a really common thing. Actually. Um, where a lot of games will do this because you, it will just like spin your GPU like over and over again. So irresponsible. It's kind of an easy oversight to make though, if you, if you think about it, right? I mean, I guess, you know, developers will have learned from this, but it's kind of the same thing here. Like the, the issue with, with this is that also it's only that exact model. So have no fear, my friends. New World is safe to play, but honestly. There was a few models, but it's mostly the, the EVGA ones. I have a feeling it's probably poor capacitors slash VRMs. Yeah. Probably cheap VRMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's always... It feels bad, man, for if, uh, a $1,500 plus. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, good. oh. The, the, the wor I feel like the worst part about that, though, is that not only is their very I expensive GPU mind. dead, right? It's <laughs> it's very expensive, but also now they have to buy another one, right? In, like, this horrible market, because Inks well, has all of them, right? Like, what are you going to do? Stop. Like <laughs> EVG, actually EVG will send them replacements. It's just going to take forever to get them. <laughs> oh man, very very unfortunate. You hate to see it, guys. You definitely hate to see it. But don't worry, as Ink says, Guild Wars Two will not do that because Guild Wars Two will never run at over sixty FPS. Therefore, not breaking your GPU. Dragons, and your dragons will not break your fifteen hundred dollar plus video card. Yeah, I had an experience with uh, with Guild Wars Two recently. Where I was, <laughs> I was, I was trying to get this uh, DLL to work, and I couldn't use it with the D nine twelve proxy. And oh my goodness, the game would it just ran so poorly. Like I've been using the DirectX twelve thing for so long that like it makes the game like completely playable. Like it it makes the game a lot better. Like it's just a much better experience. But you know, I wanted to take some really nice screenshots. Oh yeah. So I had to. I had yeah, to yeah. do something else. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. It just. You know. Yeah. Screenshots. <laughs> there is no more meter. Dll. Meter. Dll is gone. It's gone. It's gone. Unironically, it's actually gone. It's over. There's only. There's only loader. Dll. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, new world. Oh. I don't know why, or well, I kind of know why, but I have zero interest in the game. Like I, I I I feel like I was I got I got really in, in I felt really in love with the concept when they first announced it like this kind of like dark gritty semi fantasy uh, uh semi real world uh like um, America alternate reality kind of situation I I don't know if you guys remember it but nowadays it's just another it just seems like another like super high fantasy I don't know it, it feels very uninspired, in my opinion. But they, maybe that's that's probably just me, because a lot of people seem very excited about it. But I just, I, I, I yeah. There does seem to be a lot of hype. They yeah. rate. They definitely. They definitely reined it in. Like you know, New World got reined in a bit. That's for sure. Uh, it was. It was a very. It's a very different game now to how it was back then. The the overall actual you know setting of it is kind of the same but like the concept behind it is different so yeah it, and they they definitely have made it a bit more like high fantasy for sure right like you know one of the abilities that i had never seen before i was like what the fuck is this it turns out that having an axe allows you to summon like a gravity well now i, I don't know how that makes any sense but yeah you can I yeah mean, that yeah <laughs> i mean it's shit like that where i'm just like that was definitely not what i was looking for wow everything everything's got magic there's just yeah, I don't know. It's it, yeah. 
it, yeah, it, it's definitely more. It's um, it's definitely more magical now, right? Like for sure. It, it was. It used to be like very like you know, people who have magic can like throw a fireball or like throw a like a light beam at people. But now, now there's definitely a bit more kind of magical inspiration there as well. There's a, there's a, it's a, it is a bit more keyed up compared to it was. I would still say though, compared to, uh, compared to like, you know, most MMOs, it definitely is towards the lower end of high fantasy, but it definitely is a bit more in that direction now. I still yeah. do really like the setting though, actually. I do really enjoy the setting. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I, mean, uh, I, for New I World. definitely understand how people would, would find it to be interesting and hype worthy. Yeah. It's just like, I, I feel. Join us, Daroya. Come and chop some I trees. I, I feel no interest. Come and in kill some turkeys. And How about some, some turkeys? turkeys. <laughs> wow i kind of want to play that game just because it's it's literally a griefing simulator the yeah, whole game like is just oh, oh yes goodness. that's that's content right there like i like it used to be my my, my my inner goon comes out in games like that like it, my it's my inner goon like i just can't help myself <laughs> I just That's see another, someone have. Yeah. I see someone having fun, and I want it to stop. <laughs> we we can't have that. Sorry. I mean that's that's another thing that I that completely also turned me off as well. And I know that's very unpopular in this uh, this this stream. But the 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 PvP open world stuff. It's like yeah, I don't I don't want to I don't want to get grieved all the time. I it is unbelievable. Seriously, I want to have my like, fun. It, it, it is. It, it is exactly what you would think like it was day one of the beta there are like 10 man kill squads going around like no joke dude like and they like run you down 5v1 10v1 no problem there was some good fights but like yeah, a big part a, a big part of it like was trying to like dodge the kill squads right that people have going up there and this is kind of where the the opt out of pvp system like really backfires actually because the thing is right the only people who opt in are in the kill squads so that means like no one's opted in because if you're in a kill squad or you're going to get ganked so in other words, you can't fight the kill squads because the kill squads are the only people who are opted in and everyone else is opted out, right? So you just have like these big squads running around and you don't really have a lot of individuals doing it. Like, I don't know, like there, there are definitely going to be some issues with the open world PvP, I think, with uh, with New World. But it will be very interesting to see how it competes with Guild Wars 2, actually, because to kind of veer it back around to Guild Wars 2 here, I think, the, you know, New World is the first attempt, like legitimate attempt to actually do something like World versus World, right, in a modern title. Um, there are some other games that do have a, an element of Realm v Realm. You've got stuff like Black Desert Online, right, and ESO also has this stuff. But, you know, Guild Wars 2 World vs. World is almost kind of like reigns supreme in Realm vs. Realm, like large-scale PvP combat, which, ironically enough, as the game mode has been left, like, to rot and destitute and completely alone, alone and unloved. It's still um, the best. But yeah, it still actually does shine. <laughs> and I am super curious to see how New World is going to stack up against that and, and see if it will scratch that itch in players uh, compared to World vs. World. And I'm equally curious to see what Arena are going to do as well because they, I mean, I mean, they have said the thing that if anyone told me they said, I would assume it was like a fake leak or completely made up bullshit. ArenaNet said the words, World vs. World will be a cornerstone game mode yeah. for Guild Wars 2. Sounds like an April Fool's joke to me, but you know what? Hey, you know, I'm inclined to believe them. Well, let's see what they've got up their sleeves, right? With the Maybe in the announcement, they'll tell us about some stuff. They've gotten yeah, solved that we know alliances so are coming. Maybe, maybe I'll be right in the end, actually, about uh, End of Dragons. And it's all faction-based, and there's going to be open world, world versus world maps, essentially. Well, uh, I, I don't, I don't think they would oh, ever do that. Like, no, nah. me neither. But that was my, that was my biggest, biggest take some years about, back, where I was like, yes, I, the next I, expansion. Fully, fully focus on the factions. <laughs> Let's go. Maybe, maybe, I mean... If they if they made open world world versus world maps where it was like you're just playing along minding your own business but like other players could damage you I would never leave the map and I would only play dead eye. Yeah. But like imagine how fun that would actually be just having one map where it's like all the factions competing for uh, access to some some dungeon or whatever something in the center I, I don't know and you're competing for territory and just this one map it's huge but I would fucking love it. It would be so fun, so refreshing to have in the open world. I know it's not going to happen. And like, unfortunately, but... the game wasn't. I, I don't think the community is built. For oh that. no! No, a hundred percent no. It would. Uh, that there would be. There would be a rage. The marionette rage. Holy yeah, the, shit! The marionette the got rage. people. That it was got... so. Yeah. 
Oh my god. It Ro really got the on worst out of everyone. Holy shit. Yeah, sorry. Inks. Before we move on to, to getting stomped by the marionette, um, mm. do you think part of the problem with Rover's World is that there aren't any other Realm vs. Realm games really that run in competition with it? And so innovation stagnates and they don't really need to push themselves to maintain the status quo? I mean, I don't. Sense, I, I think you're right, partially in in the sense that I think there isn't any competition because it's not really that popular, and because it's not very popular, it's not really getting any innovation. So it's like a self fulfilling prophecy. Um, but yeah, or an evil. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think ArenaNet just committed really hard to Living World, and that just maybe wasn't a good call. I, I think it's kind of simpler than that. I I, I don't think that you know I, I don't think that ArenaNet is a company that doesn't necessarily innovate or doesn't know how to innovate. I think they do. It's just that. I think they just, they said, right, we have loads of, and you can kind of see this with, with what Isaiah Cartwright said. This is like a really long callback here, but um, there was like an AMA on the Mana Works thing, which is where Mike O'Brien and a bunch of the other ANET devs went, right? And the in the AMA, like someone asked them, like, what, you know, what would you do? You know, what, what have you learned? Like when you were developing Guild Wars, so something to that effect, right? And Isaiah said, too many game modes, right? Like, you know, don't make too many game modes. And I think that that really says to me that certainly within some of the management at ArenaNet, they were maybe there was some regret about having all these different modes to focus on, and they would rather focus on just one, which is kind of what they ended up doing, right? They ended up focusing very, committing very heavily to open world PVE and uh, the story content. Uh, but I mean, I think maybe they're reconsidering that approach now, and they're going to try and you know focus on more than one game mode at the same time and see if they can pull it off. You know, they get those, uh, you know, they get the big grind. And trying to develop that stuff but i don't think it's necessarily like a, a you know the lack of competition i think that i mean i think that open world pvp is one of those things that i think players like really want in a way right i think it really excites people like this this idea of like the the world being a bit more player controlled i think that's but kind of what players world, are really looking for so open world is more of a roamer's delight than realm versus realm don't get me wrong both happen but in open world PvP, you're more likely to run into 1v1 than in a realm versus realm game where you're way more likely to hit a blob. Not to say that you're not going to hit a kill squad, like you said, because that's going to exist, especially to just to grief low-level players, just to make their life miserable, basically. Um, but I, 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 I think Brazil. there's a big difference. I think there's a big difference in like, like open world PvP versus a realm versus realm game or game mode this is this is semi true okay um but i okay this this might be like very very blue sky thinking here actually but i think the only reason why people blob now is because it's easy blobbing is actually not a very effective way to win world versus world because what what is, what is winning in world versus world winning in world versus world is, is controlling the territory right it's controlling the territory it's upgrading structures it's controlling supply lines it's denying your opponent's supply uh, and winning the matchup but the thing is nobody cares about that like not no one literally no one like maybe pike and square cares okay and even they don't care right so the thing is, is that I think the only reason why people blob is because it's kind of fun to do that, because you can just turn your brain off and go like, me smash, right? Me press buttons, me see numbers appear, me monkey, me have fun, right? Um, and because no one cares about winning. Like, if winning was, like, the goal, if winning was the reward, right? You know, like, you know, the, the goal was like, oh, server, server, guild, 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 alliance, 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 right? And if there were great rewards for that and there was a motivation to do that, I actually think you would see far less blobbing because blobbing is actually a very bad way to win. Um, the the quote-unquote correct way to play world versus world is actually with multiple smaller squads um, and with a lot of roaming groups, actually, like, moving around and controlling the supply lines and denying reinforcements, right? It, you know, it's actually, it's kind of a meme, actually, like, the what you'll see if people actually, actually start playing and caring about world versus world is an unbelievably cancerous style of world versus world because you're gonna have it's gonna be very very good to have like massive gank squads like killing people so they can't get back to the fight it's it's gonna be glorious guys hilarious right very funny uh but yeah I, I think that um one of the main reasons with world versus world being stagnant in the way that people approach it is because people don't take it very seriously this was kind of the same thing with pvp right um i don't know if you guys remember when everyone was like spamming like the same meta over and over again right 
right? Like over and over again. The, the reason why it didn't change is because it wasn't competitive. Like the second that it became a bit more competitive and people started caring about winning and you had like a few new teams kind of pop up, stuff like, you know, Forklift Operators, French Worms, right? Ultranum came back. When it became a bit more competitive, you actually had the meta evolve a little bit and people figured out how to play the game differently. And World versus World is that but dialed up to a million, right? Like because World versus World has essentially been non-competitive for years i think I, would it be accurate to say years it's been non-competitive for i would say so right um and as a result of that yeah like no one plays the game mode correctly so yeah you, you do see a lot of blobbing in world versus world but i think that's only because no one cares about the objective right like it is complete the, the objective is meaningless nobody cares in fact gr guilds will even deliberately throw right like um uh, guilds will even deliberately throw a matchup to get to a good one, right? So if they want to fight a server that's below them, they'll just AFK, right? And again, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do. Like, in fact, that's right. a good that's a good thing to do, right? Because if you want to get good fights, your your goal in the game mode is to actually get good fights, right? Then of course you want to manipulate the system. But that's essentially you're saying, right? We're just going to completely disengage from the objective for an entire week, right? And this is the nature of how World vs. World is played right now. So I think if you actually give a good motivation to the players, a lot of the issues surrounding some of the play styles around it, around that will actually improve massively. There you go. There's my world versus world take. Yeah, well, good take. <laughs> I've I've yeah. had like one one good experience with world versus world out of like the times that I've been in the mode, and it was playing with Goon Squad and SFD on Maguma against Tarnished Coast. We wiped everyone on the server and set up siege out front of their spawn and just siege camp them at spawn for like eight hours. And they could not play the mode. And like, <laughs> that's to me, like that's gaming right there. That's world versus world. <laughs> like having, having little squads that run around and like fight each other and like objectives and stuff. Like, yeah, we should have that. But like stuff like that. Yeah. Mag swag. Hell yeah. There it is. Like it, it, that's stuff like that. I think should be allowed to happen. And I think it happening organically is wonderful. Like yeah, well, I think it, Anage, Yeah. Like it definitely ahead, does. Go ahead. I was going to say, it definitely does, because I, I was playing on NA a bit, and I, I've got to say, it happens more on NA than EU, like, weirdly enough. Like, I actually very rarely see this happen on um, EU with, like, the, the spawn camping stuff, like, building the siege. But, dude, I transferred to NA, and I, it was on Maguma, actually. It was on Maguma and a few other servers, like, Devonna's Rest and, and Fort Aspel and stuff like this. And, dude, seriously, you go to EB, dude, EB, Eternal Bargains, guys, that is, like, the NA kingdom. NA love... Okay, they love eternal barrels and they love capturing the enemy keep and they love building trebuchets near the enemy spawn, right? And you know what? I love to see it, right? I enjoy it, right? And I've got to say, it, it, this is like, I think NA World versus World is actually closer to like, what it's desirable to be in a way. It's just so chaotic, right? Like, well, yeah, that's, that's because, that's because we have capitalism in the US and it <laughs> makes us do terrible things. Like, e EU, okay, and, and sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone who plays NA, like, EU World vs. World seems a lot more structured, right? Like, you have organized blobs, people are on Discord a lot of the time, right? Like, people are really kind of going for it. It's a bit more, like, it's a bit sweatier. I get the, I get the idea, or get the impression that EU is quite, ooh, yes, we must have the perfect groups. Like, on NA, people are like, fuck it, right? Okay, we're just gonna make a giant pug, run around in a cloud, and just, like, spam our abilities and see what happens, right? Like, NA just feels, like, so it chaotic. And really honestly, I love depends. it, right? I enjoy it. It really depends on the server you're on. Some servers on NA are way more structured than others. I can remember... I, I remember early on playing Ranger and being told to get the fuck out of World vs. World. That <laughs> class literally is not allowed in. This was years ago, mind you. But I was I, I've been I was told on more than one occasion to get the fuck out of World vs. World Ranger. It's a class that does not exist. Um so NA definitely has their overstructured guilds where they won't let you play with them unless you play, you know, certain classes and so forth. Um but then it has other servers where people refuse to get on Discord, like flat out refuse. And then yeah, it's you're basically fifty clowns running around trying to Kill fifty other clowns. Hopefully, that's gaming. We love it. We love to see it. <laughs> yeah, we do love to see it. We do indeed love to see it. We really do. And, and you know, like on this on this kind of topic, actually, because Deroy, you mentioned earlier, actually, that you know, you 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 didn't even check. You didn't even log into the game until I was like, you know, I was spamming you to say 
show you know give us show us the conversation what did you get what did you get i i'm curious do you see yourself getting kind of getting into world versus world big time when maybe alliances drop that sort of thing or is it going to have to be until the x-pack you're gonna have to is it going to be waiting until the x-pack for you it's a really good question um well are we sure that alliances will drop before uh the x-pack because i'm not yes. oh yeah, yeah they, they've confirmed it yeah they said this year yeah they, they did say before okay or Dude, or, or, or what? See, what? This is unbelievable. Actually, I'm out of the like, low. dude, everyone who isn't Brazil has become Brazil, and everyone who is Brazil what? is not crazy. Brazil anymore. This is actually crazy. Like, I, I can not... guarantee. Like, what? what... <laughs> no, it's coming. Alliances are coming this year, 2021. It'll be okay. before the yes. No, I, I, sorry yeah, for, I. Sorry for forgetting <laughs> this one line in a long blog post. <laughs> sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. Br hold on, hold okay. on. Brazil just lost it. The rest just got it. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. I was years ahead of everyone when it came to making predictions about how bad the decisions were going to be that came out of that company. And when it started to turn around and show that things were turning around, I said, this is good. It, positive change is going to happen going forward. And now for some reason, everyone is like even more jaded than I was because like <laughs> I had good reasons behind why I was mad and other people had terrible reasons behind why they were happy. And now I have good reasons for being happy and like supportive of the studio and everyone else is like, they have, they have bad reasons for being wait, upset I, about I it. I don't understand how me forgetting about when the alliances are coming out is not having. No, no, no. I'm just saying like, there was a comment. Uh, there was, there was a comment in chat about it. Oh, okay. there's a comment in chat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyways, to to go back to your actual question, mm -hmm. Ben with the with the hot take here or not hot take, but Alliances beta, it's coming out. Okay. So yes, I mean, I'll I'll try it. I guess I don't really. I I guess the thing is like I don't really have anyone to run with. I don't really have an alliance anymore. I guess I can jo join the Hardstock Guild and be Hardstock forever. Um, yeah. With all the rest of the the lads, but quite literally. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um but I, I i don't really have like all of the people that i used to play with no one's i mean no one's playing anymore even when i log in there's like a scattering of people here and there um so i i wouldn't really know where to start with the with the alliance we're bringing but the boys back together i mean the thing is i'm i'm still playing the game i'm still i'm still here i'm still doing all the things and whatnot so yeah obviously i'll try alliances uh whenever it comes out yeah I, I don't know if I'll get super invested in everything again. I mean, it'll really have to have some hard pull for me to to get me back into World vs. World Hardcore. Because I used to be like real, like going hard every weekend, just fucking getting all those pips, killing people, all that, all that good, good stuff. But I mean, so I, I the, the thing is like having crafted now six Warbringers, I. And having gotten compensation for being dumb <laughs> enough to craft six extra warbringers, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like I kind of got cucked by my uh, I, World vs. World in many ways. You, so you, I, had, I, you had a big impact um, on World vs. World. You single-handedly got the ruins nerfed, right? Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. You, exactly. yeah I guess that so. Was a good video. Yeah. <laughs> So for those who, those who don't know, guys, a Dorai, well, Dorai is the kind of player who will figure out ways, uh, uh, things to break things, right? You know, like the influence of Arathorian is there, uh, how to break the game a little bit. And what he, what he was doing was he figured out that it turns out that you could actually AFK in the monuments, right? The ruins and just basically just let it decap and then start recapping it. And it would keep you at a permanent tier three participation, right? And then you could actually... Right infinitely get pips for just like afking moving jiggling back and forth like every few minutes and just not even playing the game mode whatsoever extremely they, funny they actually yeah and they nerfed it's it they like nerfed a, it because like of deroya it was a great old time. turret engineer in pvp right there yeah exactly, exactly. Tur well, i mean have you not seen the turret engineers in open world the afk farmers dude? oh like, yeah yeah yeah. Turret yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Dude, i love this guy the, the, uh, is that really a huge problem though? dude i like if they ban afk farming that wait dude, what's this guy name his name is like it's a What's the guy's name? He's like his name is like Sushi or something like that. Um, and this guy yeah. makes videos about it. I love this guy because he does it so enthusiastic. He's he's like, dude, it's the best farm ever. I'm giving you guys the details on how to do this. I, I love it. I just love the content, man. Okay, I, I want AFK farming forever. I think it's <laughs> I think it's horrible and in a good way because it keeps people angry about something. But like, it's such a trivial thing to be angry about because who cares? 
Like, who Boom. honestly cares? Dude, that's like, actually, that is based. That is a base take right there. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, like, anyway. I, like it's it's good to be angry over trivial dumb things like like that and it's not good to be like this is going to sound really crazy coming from me like especially but like i think it's bad to be hateful towards the studio in general but being hateful and mad about stuff like that like i think it's fine i think it's actually <laughs> probably good I it gives like, you something to be mad about right like bots yeah exactly well. people people love being mad and people will always be mad and so, like, having just an outlet like that's this, this just, like, useless. Like, be mad at that. That's good. Be mad I at think... Pistol Pistol Thief and World vs. World in No Downstate Weekend. Like, be mad about stuff like that. The Brazil I, arc is insane. I mean, yeah, sorry. I personally Ian, think that AFK farming is a good thing. And that oh. you should multi-box AFK farming. Oh. Because that way the game feels more alive. There's more, and there's <laughs> there's more, more player people around. Yeah. Accounts that are active. and People. I mean, they're all in one spot, but if you go to that spot, then the game goes live. <laughs> so I think it's a good thing, and we should encourage so, it. You have and, enough GPUs to do it. <laughs> if, if I can reel this conversation back yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a little bit to, to alliances, I think just overall, I'm not really excited about alliances as a concept until I see it. I think that's the general gist of it. I think there's a lot of uh, people like hyping it up to be whatever they wish it to be or hope for it to be. Um, but we don't know what it's actually going to be. And I think that's the, until I actually get the deets on, on, on what's going to be there, I, I, don't, I don't feel particularly hyped for a, for a concept. Um, I think that's fair. That's very uh, vague. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's pretty fair. What excites me is not only that we're going to get alliances before the end of the year, but that it's going to be in sort of a, a live beta environment where they're going to continue to iterate on it, and not just yeah. drop it in and then forget about it or whatever, right? It's, it's going to continue to see improvement. Yeah. This approach, I think, is very exciting. And I hope they do this for other features as well, right? I'm looking at you, Legendary Armory. Right, because if they, don't, if they don't fix the weapon sorting thing, to go back to their title, like if you can't, if they don't figure out a way to make the weapon sort work, ooh, not good. Not good, ArenaNet, not good. Um, but yeah, no, I think that is actually a very exciting concept that they are going to take this and actually respond to feedback and then fix things. Just and, use Ascended, dude. Yeah, just yeah, just use some Ascended gear, bro. Like, just use some Ascended. No, no big deal. No big deal. Yeah, but I, I salvaged all my Ascended. I don't what know. will happen when yeah. heroes come out exactly. and you can use... No, no, no. When they make heroes and you have to put Ascended gear on heroes and everyone salvaged it already. Oh, is that what's going to happen? Is that an oh. End of Dragons thing? Oh, You're gonna, we're going to get so heroes? Well, Beautiful. some some people are saying this. I I I, I think it's kind of troll, to be honest. I don't know. Like, I think that we should get heroes that can use land spears, but not have land. Oh, spear but you the player can The players, Ooh, players can. Now That's we good. Have hot take, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Like, yeah, some some people say heroes, but you know, on you know, I, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, we'll find out next week, I guess, right? Like, what the kind of gimmick yeah, of the honestly, expansion actually, is going to be. What what, um, what do we what do we think is going to be the big like most exciting drop of well, information on Tuesday because was, it's coming on Tuesday. I was going to phrase it a little bit differently we're, actually, we're um, yeah. because I, I was going to say what would hook you Droid, actually, because I think they're looking to maybe oh, target everything. veterans a little bit more. Right. Because the thing is, like, you know, I, but, I, I, I'm so hooked on it already. I'm super hyped for this. I mean, I know I was talking about like a not getting hyped for a vague concept like alliances, but I mean, an expansion I can kind of get behind just by uh, just on principle, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm already hyped for. Uh, I'm trying to plan out. The most annoying thing to me is we don't have a release date, and it's really hard for me to plan out vacation. Like, fucking just. Give, mm. I mean, goddamn it! Give me a give me a release date. I need to plan for this shit. Do you think we Do you think we find out release date um next Tuesday? No. Might be a little bit early, right? No. Like, I don't think no, so. No, there's it's way too early. Yeah. I mean, we're we're gonna get it a month before, just like Path of Fire. Let's go. If they just give it to just us, like I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. This I'm one so today, guys at eleven o'clock. Yeah. End of dragons launches. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Hey. <laughs> I like honestly, like I think the best, the best instance of like that example happening was Bethesda at E3 when they said, "Oh yeah, by the way, Fallout Shelter is available now. Download it." That's the per like that was perfect. And then I think the absolute worst example of like sticking to a deadline is Cyberpunk because they just. They made deadline. They said, oops, we can't make it. Oops, here's the new release date. Oops, we can't make it. Oops, here's the new one. 
and then the game finally came out and it was a it was a disaster and it's still a disaster like it was a whole, like it, what do you mean it wasn't that bad inks I, I was able to play it perfectly. You have 30 I, graphics cards. Of no, course that you were. Nothing, that, that's not, first of all, I didn't have them when Cyberpunk came out. And secondly, that's, that doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> it was only yeah. bad if you played on like a console. Just on uh, consoles. Console when peasants. Did, when do we yeah. think it's coming though? February. I think. February is expansion. But isn't that a bad time to release a game? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. If I'd be cool if it came out next summer. Or... If it came out at the beginning of next yes. summer, I'd be down with that. I'd I'm be totally, totally my I'm totally hoping for April March. Yeah. Like that yeah. would be so fucking sweet. Cuz I know I know I can plan around it. <laughs> yeah, it's in that That'd kind of awesome. a, it's in that kind of a, either it's early 2022. It can't be January obviously because they're on holiday there for some of that, right? Cuz they've got the 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 vacation go on break, right? Christmas break, go and be festive. All right, so it's got to be February is the earliest it can be, like maybe March or April. I feel like April I don't know. I feel like April's too late, you know. Uh, like, I'm oh, just gonna know. say quarter one. Yeah, quarter quarter one is 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 uh, definitely like the the deadline. Because I mean, look, if you're saying early 2022, that means quarter one. Let's be honest. Okay, that means come on, that's what it means. Right? That's what it means to me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, like, well, early 2022, rather actually. So it's it's going to be a little while. Um, but they're, they're I, probably I hope it is pressing yeah. to get it out because there is going to be a lot of drought after this whole season re-release stuff mm. or whatever um there is going to be like a, a big drought seemingly maybe there'll be something in between who knows but yeah i think they're kind of stressing to to avoid that issue the same with the that happened with heart of thorns you know because that i mean that was that was a killer for the community in a, in a lot of ways um, i think i think it's super interesting i think it's super interesting to me because I'm not. I'm not sure if they. Pro I agree with you that they probably are stressing to get it out sooner. But I'm actually not sure how much it matters because I think that no matter what, everyone's going to come back for the expansion, right? Everyone's going to go berserk for it, right? Um. Anyway, but I, th but I think that's the. I, I think we're uh, focusing our attention on the wrong wrong people here because I think it'll it won't matter to the players um, mm. in the long run if they if they push the date a little bit because we're all ready for it. But it will matter to like stakeholders. Uh, hmm. investors stuff like that ncsoft it'll matter to them and i think that's the that's going to be the pushing factor like the biggest push is to like get yeah. it out we we kind of want to see some we want to see some money i i think i think cyberpunk has been such a shit show that investors might think twice about saying just fucking put the game out we want our money they because look at that no, unfortunately they, not. They probably won't. They probably won't. Let's just be yeah. honest. Like, they probably won't. Yeah, new Brazil. Give, what? New it's, Brazil. It's new term. Brazil copium has kicked in, boys. Okay? I, like, I should of of all the people that should be thinking, no, they'll just get it out. Like it's me because like I've seen enough shit and like I see enough shit on a daily basis, pretty much that like people with money that like back companies that want to return that want an ROI, they don't have feelings and they don't care. Like it's not even about money for them; it's about winning. Money is a consequence of of, of winning. They just want to win. Like that's what that's that's why this like shit show with refunds and getting off the PlayStation Store. Like they don't care. And that's what how this, we as yeah. consumers get sh uh, just shit shows and yeah, bad exactly. Yep. You know. I mean, it, it's just about churning the wheel. Let's get some money in the bank. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it feels so... It's not... A, no, no, no. no. Like that, but... Money in the bank isn't the thing. It's about no. my company is better than yours. That's the thing. We put out X amount of title more than, titles more than you did last year. Yeah. yeah. Look at my big EP. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, say it, that... and it's, it, it really, it really saddens me when you, when you talk about it like that. But in, in many respects, it, that is the reality for, for some of these game companies. They are... Well, companies, they're publicly traded companies that are, uh, they, I mean, yeah, they got to listen to their investors. They got to listen to their stakeholders. It's, it's just the name of the game, unfortunately, but yeah. I, so, I, I mean, I, as I much as I would love it to just like, just push it till it's, uh, the best thing that it could ever be. And the, I don't really mind the drought. It's all going to be good in the end. Um, I don't think everyone, uh, involved in the decision-making sees it that way. It's pretty interesting to me, actually, that uh, uh, that you know they they've they've gone this direction. I think they have a good plan. 
right? You know, I like the arena net strategy right now because it is certainly true that we're going to have a drought. But if you are maybe a returning player, it almost might not feel that way, right? To a, to an extent, obviously, because suppose you're coming back to the game. Maybe you missed out season four. Maybe you missed season two. Maybe you've never played season two before, right? Or you didn't play season three, right? Or whatever. Or you didn't play Ice Brood Saga. In a way, for a lot of players who might come back to the game, start getting interested in it again, they're actually going to have content. And also, then you have stuff like the DX11. I, like, you know, seriously, I, I don't know what your guys' experience is like on this, but see, I get people complaining about performance in my stream every single day. Like, every day, people are like, why doesn't the game run well? Like, where are my frames? Where are they? I've got a new computer, and the game still runs like shit. What's going on here? And I think this is nice. kind of an interesting thing. I think that, in a way, the strategy that ArenaNet's employing here, it actually, if we're going to talk bottom line, it actually might keep people in the game engaged enough to actually spend money. So, you know, in a way, they might be able to actually kind of keep, keep things going there, particularly if they release more features, because it does appear that what they're going to try and do is release additional features over the course of the kind of like the the drought, as it were, right? With the DX11, uh, they already released Legendary Armory. Uh, they're going to release Alliances as well. Maybe some other stuff as well, potentially. It's not copium, guys. It's not copium. They've literally already done this. Like DX11 is confirmed. Alliances are confirmed. Legendary Armory is already out. Um, so it's entirely possible that they're able to maintain some level of momentum, like using the re-release of the old content uh, with the new achievements. And of course, the new achievements are gonna are a really big pull as well. I mean, the rewards are really good, right? Like everyone can get a free legendary amulet for doing all the story. You get a yeah. precursor for the next generation of legendary weapons, like the Gen 3 legendary weapons. So you can start on your next legendary really easily. And essentially, with, does that like kind in a way imply that you'll just be able to just spend gold and, and more or less be able to instantly get one legendary as well so like that's a pretty big incentive i don't know i think that arena Net, they've got a good plan here if they continue to execute it here as well it should be pretty big i guess yeah. everyone agrees i guess yeah. everyone agrees yeah. we, we in, in a sense definitely i i guess we all agree because there there are a lot of good things uh in the pipeline for for the future of the game actually now i mean I would have never, it just, I mean, just six months ago, I would have never, ever believed that they would go for a DX11 upgrade. I mean, hey, you, you want to know the hot take on this? The actual oh. hot take? This oh, is the let's real go. hot take. Okay, I'm here's ready. The, here's the real, all right. So they're going to make infusions and particle effects account bound. They'll do it. And DX11 will allow people to have more of them stacked up on top of each other and not lose frame rate. And it nice. will be monetized, and they'll monetize the part as of long, the collection. As long as they make legendary infusions, I'm all good, because it's the last thing that I'm missing now. And it's annoying me to swap yeah. those around. Yeah, it's yeah. honestly fucking annoying. That, you, you know... Okay, 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 right, look. Okay, I, I the, the amount of copium spam that's going to come in the chat here is going to be unreal. I'm glad I don't have it enabled. But feel, Okay, wait, wait, wait you... hold, hold up. I, I, need to, I need to know, what, it, what does copium mean? Well, yeah, I, don't know. I feel like so out of the loop. Now. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a combination of coping, right? As in, like you're coping with something and opium. Oh. So it's you know, you're, it's copium. You're okay, drinking in it. the copium. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Look, che cheers. To do you know what's coming? Users. Do you know what's coming before the expansion? Fractal what, rework. Me? Fractal rework. They already tried that. Yeah, but actually, they're gonna do it again. Well, how are they gonna Wait, like what, I, the third time? Yeah. What is it? What is Boom. it? Even, what, what would a fractal rework even do? Legendary, legendary infusions. infusions. Legendary mm -hmm. infusions. Fractal. Maybe they look at AR again, right? They talk about AR. Maybe they add fractal leaderboards. Don't no. Don't even mention the fucking leaderboard. <laughs> don't even oh, talk no. about the leaderboard. It should never ever be mentioned ever again. <laughs> I forbid it. It's they're a gonna, dead they're thing. Going it, to... It's a bad idea. Stop. They're gonna remove any <laughs> resistance altogether, and then... I'd be so down for that. I'd be that so would... down. I, no. I don't know if that's a hot no. take. I don't know and if that's then, a hot take. One hundred percent, like no, delete it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think Agadir's is actually a terrible mechanic in fractals. I don't know if that's yeah. is that a hot take. I thought like that's not a hot take, right? That's a it's a just a shit mechanic. But I think a, a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people get, I guess, feel that way. But I don't know. I, I feel like it's a great like uh, gate for. Uh, it's like an artificial gate for people to climb the the levels in fractals. I I, I don't know. It's yeah. 
Don't you I already kind of? It. Don't you already kind of have that though? Like with the le the way the level system works, because you can't even open the LFG to like le like tier four unless you have the level required. So yeah, you can technically but you can like. But you can join any any you, group. Yeah, you regardless. can piggyback. I mean, right, you can piggyback. Right, obviously. Um, but you, you know, you can just play a hundred times level hundred. And yeah, you could. You I mean, it's not... I think that's kind of okay now, right? Like, I mean, if someone's on a hundred, like a hundred, a fractal a hundred, a hundred times, I feel like they're good enough to do like tier fours at that point. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't, agree I don't with that. like it. I don't, I don't what? like it. What I mean, uh... what, what do you think would be the negative consequences of like removing AR or making it account wide at the very least? Like account wide, but we maybe more reasonable than it instead. Yeah. Then, well, I mean, how does infusions work account wide? I yeah people have spent so much Ooh. on infusions and stabilizing matrices that like i i don't i don't know how they would remove it i don't oh, think yeah. it's it, remotely the entire, uh, the entire economy of yeah uh, oh, it'll be weird, would completely crash and burn yeah. if yeah. stabilizing would, matrices yeah. at zero value then there would be no reason to really do fractals because the whole value set it's out of the window it's I mean... too much of a. I think it's <laughs> too much of a problem to solve to warrant the development time to remove AR. Ah, that is a good point. That is a good point, actually. Yeah, because the only thing the only thing you could do is add legendary infusions, but not everyone would be interested in those, right? Like, you, not mm -hmm. everyone would go for them. Um, I would. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. 18, I mean, obviously, yeah, that would be big. of those. Yeah. Eighteen yeah. infusions in, in the, the showers. The Royer. Yeah. In the Mislock Sanctuary. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Wanting to get socketed. What do you do with <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes? What do you do with um give me the purple infusions? Oh, oh, sorry, say again. Them be swappable as well. I mean, but can would you be able to earn legendary infusions in World vs. World? Oh, only six months later when they add it to World vs. World and PvP oh, okay. as well. <laughs> okay, PvP too. Don't forget because uh, this is the super. You, they they need all the gear that they cannot use for their mode. This is a really weird thing about how legendaries work in this game, um, because, because especially with infusions, because obviously world versus world legendary, I think you'd have unique ones for each game mode, right? Probably for world versus world, not for PvP, because PvP doesn't use infusions in any meaningful way. Um, but the thing is with uh, with world versus world, right? They're different, right? Like the world versus world infusions are different. They give you like damage you know, against guards, right? And they give you, right. you know, they give you yeah. the, you know that kind of stuff right so they they have a different value they give you stats and damage against guards so you'd probably have to unlock those and the fractal ones right so you'd have fractal ones that would give you agony resistance uh and they'll give you extra stats right and Honestly, then that you'd have fun. the world versus world I mean, ones it, you'd be able to unlock those too it feels redundant in a way because it's like it's just stat swaps and legendary runes and sigils already have all the and, and armor for that matter have all the stats and all the combinations and whatnot and it feels like just adding another layer but honestly it feels like a it feels kind of fun to, to like purifying that yeah it's an it's, it's, it's adding annoying an, it's to... adding annoyance but i kind of like it no uh, no i mean I it's annoying why. to equip each character with agony resistance for fractals Oh, but I mean the legendary versions. So you would have to unlock both a legendary World vs. World infusion that only has these like World vs. World stats. Yeah, that would also and be then, annoying. And then yeah, and then unlock the, the the regular agony set. Just like they have the legendary armors now. You unlock the World vs. World, PvP, and raid. It's not just like a blank legendary that you unlock. Mm. I don't know. It, it kind of makes sense. It it is adding annoyance. Uh, especially because there's like what four different no i'm i'm exaggerating now i was about to say there's four different versions of the world versus world stats but no they all add the uh damage uh, against cards as well yeah damage yeah, so you have you damage reduction damage and, and there's damage, defense yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but there's still all the stats so yeah like the plus five whatever the fuck an another yeah, thing really with this the stats. because they could all do you know what they could also do with this this is this is why i think this is i think this will be a really popular feature um, and this, oh, the trouble is, I feel like all of this has such a big impact in the economy in a way, right? Because I was going to say that they could also decouple infusions, as in like cosmetic infusions, from items as well. You could like add them to a wardrobe. Because then you would say, so when you drop a chak or something like that, you would like add the chak to your wardrobe. And you could like slot it into your your items, like on all on all of your characters. So that would be like a really 
requested feature i think people would really like that but also it's like holy shit what are we doing here like now you have like infinite chucks to use on all your characters and it also consumes the item because the really interesting thing about a chuck infusion is that oh. you can use it for like a year and then sell it if you want to right you can like just remove it and then sell it like it doesn't actually get bound to you in any way so that would be weird because you'd actually have these items kind of getting dissolved and actually consumed um but you also have this like account wide thing, so you have loads of them. But you also would have this like account wide system and account wide agony. I I oh no, this now that I'm thinking about it, it seems very complicated. They might not do that. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's not. <laughs> the really whole infusion system is super. I mean, there, there's just a lot of intertwining things that it'll be annoying to really deal with. Even like, even if, as a player, if you wanted to do that with infusions, so let's just take the chuck egg sack. You would have to unlock an egg sack. Mm for every time you wanted to use it per you know for your account mm. so if you want to have two egg sacks per character you would have to unlock it oh twice. my god but that's kind of the same thing now though right you do you still have to if you want to use it right. twice you have to buy two right exactly if you want two egg infusions now you have to have two of them so i don't think that would as far as unlocking it like a legendary like that, system yeah. like that it wouldn't be any different but that seems like it seems like they would have to build a completely new system that looks like the legendary armory but works differently. Yeah, it, you would have to have like, some kind of armory for infusions if you wanted to do it that way. That is. Yeah. It if you uh, I don't know if I'm digging it, but yeah. What, what would account wide agony resistance look like? How do you do that? Because obviously then you you'd have, have to, to you extend the fractal god title. Because it already goes up to what forty five. So you would have it purely. Extent, you'd have it purely as like a buff. One hundred and fifty. Yes, just purely buff. Extend it to one hundred and fifty. Keep it. Keep it uh, going. You just upgrade slowly. But I guess. I guess you would have to have. So like, let's say the fractal god is like the top of the pie, extra, and there'd be one hundred and fifty agony resistance that you could get outside of that system. And so what... essentially, if you had all of it, you would add it up to one hundred and ninety five. Which is awesome for like Ellie's and Rangers and Guardians. What happens with uh, what? What happens with like all the infusions though that have AR on them? Would you just convert? Yeah, they just turn into the... stats or what? They, they they just have stats now or? And also like, what do you do with the actual items know. themselves? Like, what happens to infusion slots? Like, does that that just doesn't mean I, I guess, anything anymore? Right? I guess you'd essentially just convert that whole infusion system, like all infusions, like all the regular AR infusions and and um, stabilizing matrices, you'd convert that over to uh, the legendary uh, infusion acquisition method. So essentially, it'd, it'd become just a material for crafting the, the legendary version. What's because interesting about yeah. this conversation is that I'm 100% I'm positive Arena Knights had this conversation already, and that's why they haven't done anything with it, because it's not exactly straightforward as to how you would solve that problem. Yeah. yeah. This is an interesting idea. Yeah, you could make it like magic fine. So you have to like consume infusions, right? You have to eat right. the little plus ones and stuff. And if you eat enough of them, it will give you yeah, but, an AR or something. But I, but I think it's, it's uh, very important to like point out that the first 150 kind of gets you to the, to even be able to play uh, level 100, right? So you'd have to have those first 150 be semi easily accessible. And then anything above that, I guess, could be some something else. But you kind of need to. Everyone needs to be able to get 150 AR with a an account bound system rather easily. Otherwise, it kind of kills fractals instantaneously. Yeah, and that would because certainly it, be yeah. that would be that would be my concern. This is why I'd be in favor of just like literally like removing AR because I I think that the actual kind of PVE end game kind of where do you go is super weird right because let's be honest fractals are probably where players should go first right like you should do fractals and fractals and strikes are like the first two pieces of pve content and honestly like some of the strikes are probably certainly harder than tier one fractals right so realistically like fractals should be the entry point for end game pve in guild wars 2 and of course they are right you can do a lot of the tier ones without um you know without having ar obviously right but it's just super weird to me that the entry point is like the most gatekeepy system wise out of all of the pve game modes right like you can do raids with exotics you can do raids with rare gear you can do strikes with exotics right you can do literally everything else in the game like with exotic gear without having this kind of weird system 
uh, with ascended gear and infusions. And and also it's also just confusing as well because now you've got to now you've got to do some weird shit. Now you've got to do some stuff like oh I've got to infuse this. I've got to attune this. I've got to infuse my back piece right to get all the way up to tier four. It's just like super weird right like the way the system actually operates. Like it's so much less streamlined compared to a lot of the stuff that is and later on in the game. And yet it's so ingrained now that just removing it creates a whole host of problems. Yeah. It's yeah. actually, it's it's only really hitting me right now, I guess, through this conversation that like removing either part or changing, changing something to be account bound or whatnot, it, like it, it, it very much messes up with the whole system as is as complicated as the system is right now. It, we've kind of gotten used to it and everyone kind of deals with it without yeah. issue. Um, I mean, I a hundred percent agree with what you're saying, Teapot, that it's not a good system. I don't think it ever was a very good system, super gatekeepy and all that. But it's so ingrained within the game now that yeah. just removing there's a, it mm, is there's a lot to unravel ton of problems. You'd have to look at rewards, right? You'd have, as Dora said earlier, right? With the matrices, you'd have to look at that. You'd have to look at um, what kind of progression you would replace it with. Like you'd have to kind of implement legendary infusions. You'd have to completely yeah, rework yeah. what an infusion even is, right? Like what? Yeah, you know, do you only I'm, have one I'm, slot per ring now? Like, do you remove infusing in a tuning? It would be like super fucking weird. Because otherwise, um, because then what would you do with stat infusions, right? Because they don't have agony. You still need the three slots to add the stats. So you still have exactly. infusing in a tuning. Like, oh my god, it's infusions just such a would just be stats. Yeah, it's so such a legend, legendary system, infusion right? would simply just be like plus five stat or something. Yeah, something plus. 10 plus 10 plus, plus 10 damn. oh wait are we going Let's china go. you want to go china mode dude? Yeah, yeah i want to yeah. go china if if a legendary infusion gave me plus 30 to a stat <laughs> i would make all legendaries and get all legendary infusions we're not adding like legendary plus infusions no legendary infusions can only go into legendary items Hi, that's a game right there <laughs> that's gaming. gaming and the warrior can get them out of his chests yes mm. hallelujah <laughs> Yeah. Can, you, can you imagine how disgusting like all the one shot builds in World Boss will be if everyone could give yes. you like plus thirty power, like, <laughs> eighteen yes. plus thirty power infusions on every build? Nice, some good That's content right there. Incredible. I love it. Um, and, and the whole point is, guys, is for accessibility, right? Like making a system like more easy to kind of get into is is pretty much it always a good thing. Because it means that more people can do it. It doesn't mean that you you are you're not reducing the skill ceiling, guys, or like the you know the complexity ceiling. You're reducing the complexity floor. Complexity floors are irrelevant, right? Because um you know like you know they they're meaningless, right? Like the only thing that's relevant is like the complexity ceiling or the skill ceiling. Having having your game or a system have a high barrier to entry is bad, right? There's pretty much no positive effect from having like a high barrier to entry to a system. It's it's one of the things that Guild Wars two does extremely well actually is that guild wars 2 does have very low barrier to entries for basically every single game mode right you just play pvp no gear required right play world versus world hit the button start playing right you, hey not, hell you can even do it with like rage right? cost to get a full set of uh infusions nowadays it's probably like 500 gold someone what? no so, Fra fractal people could definitely tell us this like there's probably it used to be like 70 80 gold no full stat infusions no, no, not, so, no, 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 just like oh, yeah, 150 yeah, yeah, yeah. and playing the game. Yeah, it's probably less than 100. It's probably like yeah. between, it's probably between like 75 and 100. Yeah. For stat infusions, it's expensive as hell. Still pretty, yeah, still pretty steep for new players, I guess. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 80 gold-ish, uh, chat says, yeah. Yeah, so again, it's, it's not horror, it's not like bad. That's not expensive, right? But I think it's more the idea of that you have to kind of go through, you have to jump through a lot of hoops, right, to get to that, which I think kind of bamboozles yeah. people. Um, a little bit. And yeah, to talk about this, like, shouldn't raids be the target? Well, raids, again, ironically enough, raids don't have this problem. Yeah, they're more accessible. Um, <laughs> raids are more accessible than fractals. Like, you can get into a raid. I mean, look, this is where I met the legendary Bok. Um, uh, for those who don't know, guys, I met this player called Bok, and he wandered to the aerodrome, and he joined my, I made a training group, and he joined my training group. He was literally a fresh level 80 boost. What a okay? lad. Right, he was full soldier's gear on his guardian. No, warrior, sorry. Full soldier's gear. And I had to force him to strip down naked so he wasn't tanking the boss because he had no other gear. <laughs> he, was, he, he was literally fresh. He was like 80 AP or whatever you have at the start. He was a completely new player. And I don't know how he did this, but he wandered to the area. He was like, dude, I'm joining a raid. And he went right in. 
okay, and started pumping, okay? And the, obviously that would be essentially, he's, you know, he's kind gonna of, be part of the, the elitist yeah. trading party. Yeah, someday. yeah, he's, he's in deep, right? He's in deep. And, um, you know, wh why are raids us probably? Because raids are far harder um than uh fractals fractals are incredibly easy um and why they're less popular because it's 10 man content and fractals are very very easy that's why um but yeah like accessibility but the thing is like this is the thing like you know raids have another issue raids are just far too difficult like um for most players like you know if we can kind yeah. of get into this right we can talk about this right oh i would um, love to talk about but, this but raids are way way too um um they're way too hard for most players right uh, and fractals are very easy Harder than half the raids. I actually don't agree with this. Like, Fractal, I, I I don't think so. Like, uh, even 100 CM, I consider 100 CM to be a pretty challenging encounter. But I, I do it, like, a few times with, like, good groups. And, oh my god, like, she doesn't do anything, right? Right? Like, she does nothing. I, I was there with, like, a bunch of necros, and the boss didn't even try and fight back. Like, she just died. I kind of felt bad. I was like, this, this is, this is bullying, right? Um, And they just get farmed. Like, the, the bosses, you break their bar and they die instantly, right? Um... Raids are much like hard, like they're much more like if you can't do this, if you can't do damage, if you can't do this, this mechanic, this that, if you don't have the comp, you are dead. You cannot win, right? You cannot win. There's nothing you can do. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I completely agree. Um, uh, you know, yeah, raids are. I mean, raids are less accessible, but for a different reason. Delay. Like th this is kind of like you know we're, we're talking about different problems here. So here's the issue. Like fractals have a massive accessibility problem. Like with uh, with uh, with agony, in my opinion. But yeah, raids is way harder. So they have a they yeah raids are less accessible overall. But raids don't have the same problem that fractal does. We're talking about different problems, right? It's kind of like you know you've got a flat tire, but you know your brakes aren't working as well, right? Like these are the, the, you know. Just just because, you know, oh, well, this car, this car, the brakes don't work, but hey, it's got all four tires, right? Yeah, we're talking about different issues. Like, you know, these systems have different things. You know, it's pretty, you know, having a flat tire, not great, okay? Not ideal. But having no brakes, that's pretty fucked up, right? And that's kind of where raids are, right? Like, raids are definitely in a worse situation because they are overall less accessible for sure. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and address fractals here as well, because it's in a completely different way. Like, the, syst uh, the, the fractal system, the way agony works, in my opinion, is fundamentally bad right like it's it's systemically broken raids aren't systemically broken as such although you could argue that not having difficulty options like fractals do which is a great part of fractals by the way right with tier one through tier four you could argue that fractal raids not having this is a really big issue i'd agree with that as well but again you know we're talking about separate areas here as well right like there, you know there it is but anyway um uh, go ahead brazil yeah Lay so like i think this would actually be a really interesting and cool way to do things like i I am 100% in favor of easy mode raids, um, 100%, uh, probably 110%. And I'm also probably 110%, 110% in favor of like hard modes for everything. Like, yes. and I think a cool way to go about it would be just adding one at a time and going back and refreshing each wing. So like you have, for example, for like easy mode on Veil Guardian, like you don't have to deal with greens, like greens aren't there. Uh, or they're way less impactful, and also the floor moves around slower, so it's not as pressuring. You can you can just like the mechanics aren't as intense. Like Gorse of all, like hard mode also, like on Veil Guardian, hard mode. Like if you don't do greens, you die. It instantly wipes everyone. You have to do greens. You have no choice, and the floor goes faster. Uh, like on Gorse of all, like easy mode, you could make it so the walls for the updrafts never spawn. Like they're never there. You never have to kill them. You just run to the platform. And also the balls in the last phase, they don't ever spawn. Like they're not an issue. Like regular mode could be how it is now. And on hard mode, Gors of all, the balls just start spawning immediately and you can't break the walls and you can't collide. Like you could easily do something like that and you could go back and refresh each wing like one at a time. Like every few months we get a hard and easy mode for that wing. And you just go one by one and just knock them out. And so, like, I think that would be really cool. I think it would make things way more accessible. Like, I think people just want to, exp like, I think the big thing is that people want to experience the content and they think other people will be mad at them and tell them, you're ruining my experience of the content. You can't even come in and see the story or find all the notes or do all the cool little lore things. I think that's what is very troublesome to people. And I'm all for having all that stuff be more accessible and also for being way harder for people that want it harder. And even more, you can make it so they all have unique rewards. Just change the drop tables on like the trinkets, the minis and all that stuff. Actually, you could make it so easy mode only drops minis. 
and regular mode only drops trinkets or whatever and then hard mode drops weapons and everything else you could do something like that um but you could make them all repeat ind independently each week you could be able to clear all nine of them or all three of them or whatever and get rewards three times i think that would be awesome i don't know like i don't know why they haven't already done something like that i think this would that would just be a great system to have anyways rant over go ahead yeah it's a good rant. I mean, that's the tea time bingo completed there. We've made it to the easy mode. All we need now, uh, all we need now is Brazil to whip out a Yu-Gi-Oh card or something like that, and then we're good to go. Like, we've completely uh, cleaned that up there. Uh, I have no more Yu-Gi-Oh cards because I sold my Dark Magician girl for $1,000, oh. oh, and shit. I bought big breaks for my car. Yeah. Honestly, worth it. <laughs> yeah, worth it. I sold all 12 Exodia sets that I had. Hmm. They're all gone. No more cash money, right there. Yeah, big money right there. Love to see it. I uh, yeah, like th this is this is my turn to go completely silent, I suppose, because I completely agree. Um, yeah, like this this will be one of the biggest things that they could do, and I would I would completely love for them to test the waters in the way that you were um expressing there, Brazil. Just do one boss, right? Add an easy like a story mode to one like one wing or one boss, right? And just see if it makes people engage more. Like kind of just test it out because I mean I, I know it gets memed about a lot. You see it in the leaks all the time, you see people talking about it on the Reddit, right? In game. Like raids are probably the game mode that you know, is conspicuously being missed out, right? Like, you know, like Arena isn't really talking about raids that much. And I think it's definitely the game mode that is in contention for just not exist not existing anymore. Uh, whatsoever. So that would be pretty interesting to see what they see how that would go actually. And, and honestly, I honestly think they would, because there's a lot of there's a lot of fun story in the raids, right? Like, you know, it, it's really, you know, I mean you guys remember this, right? Like we, when Wings One through Three in particular got released, right? There was a huge yep. shitstorm, right? Because pe the because there complaints. were because a big part of the Lazarus story actually transpired within the raid, right? Like the whole Wings One through Three arc is essentially about uncovering this kind of white mantle plot lot um you know involving zera to actually resurrect lazarus uh and this was the you know this is the big the big bamboozle right there uh, with how that actually translated there and, and obviously this made people very very upset but the thing is that's what people were mad about like if if you actually just gave players access to that then all of a sudden yeah i think that you know i don't think players are super bothered by it anymore right if you integrate the story and the raids then you just have that easy mode then boom away you go but this is a conversation that has been had a lot of the time so i think we, we won't dwell on it too often unless uh, too, for too long unless anyone has some additional thoughts they want to throw into the into the mix here with the easy mode thing because yeah i they, will yeah i mean he's there in the gem store Ooh, <laughs> all the zera i can just get like the I'll mask think. Same, same with Sarah too. I'll just take both of them as much of them as I can have. Uh, anyways, back to gaming. Well, um, I think it would be. So here's the thing. Here's another hot take. Here's another another hot taker right here. Um, I would be completely okay if they didn't release new raid wings for like two years. If they just went back and revamped all of the ones we have. Do you mean two to, more years or just? Yeah, one year twice. <laughs> Yeah, we've like, already hit two years, right? Yeah, I know, I know. It's, but it's just like, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. when they expand, when End of Dragons is out, like who cares? Like f fuck raids for a while. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do them later. But if they just go back and like every three months, if they just refresh the raids that we have currently, I think that would give them a lot of replayability. I think that would make a lot of people happy. I don't. Everyone's left when I'm talking about this. I said, I said fuck raids for a while, and <laughs> people just got up and walked away. <laughs> what? Well, All right, I, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm alone, but. No, I'm Go very ahead. much. I think I'm inclined to agree actually um, with this because uh, I imagine that rework. Well, actually, would I agree with that? I'm not actually sure because I have a sneaking suspicion that if you said to Arena, what would be easier, reworking old dungeons or making a new dungeon? They'd almost certainly say completely making a different. new. Well, it is different. I know because of how new. No, it's it is. completely different. It's a. It's completely different. Hmm. Do you, you think... want me to explain how different it is? Oh, let's go. Let's, let's I can, do it. I can, let's pump. I, I can, so for people that don't have experience with Guild Wars 2's dungeons, um, this is an area that I spent years and years and probably 10 plus thousand hours in. So dungeons are broken to the point where all of the scripting is not connected. Some things are just scripted independently of each other. Um, some things are linked up and some things are linked up in really weird ways. Like in Ascalonian Catacombs, the first dungeon, um, you can skip to the end boss in most of them, and you can just immediately, like, you can do like one tiny event, you can just go kill the boss. 
Um, in like path one, you can skip straight into the scepter pieces event and just do it, but you have to like kill the spider queen. Like there's weird stuff. Um, in a raw, like you only have to kill Lupicus and like one or two paths. The other ones, he's completely optional and you can just wall jump or go under the map and you can completely skip him. And there are ways to do all of that. There are holes you can fall through. Um, there are things that you can jump over, things you can jump on, and you can just map break very easily. And like in some cases, a raw path too, you can literally do a jumping puzzle before you get to the first boss and you can go straight to the end boss and you can kill it. Like you can do all this stuff. And the coding and the environments are all so broken and I'm actually pretty confident. This is a little bit of insider knowledge and I'm not going to try to get into too much of it. Um, but the reason why Super Adventure Box from my best understanding, did not come back for a while is because it operated on like a separate physics engine and it was completely broken from when they added gliding. And I think that's probably also the case with dungeons. I think they probably can't go in and really like on top of all the other stuff, like the scripting, like NPCs breaking whenever they die. And it's just not like, it's not completable anymore. You can't finish the path. That happens all the time. Um, I think it's you probably the, it's have. Same with the, if if I may take another example as well. Yeah. It was the same with the the marionette apparently. Because yeah, that doesn't people, surprise me at all. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people were uh, uh, complaining about the <clears throat> the change of the model. Uh, let's call it that. Mm -hmm. um, but in but in reality, it was like yeah, it, they just optimized the the entire instance for uh, for for everything new because it was. I mean, all of the stuff that they made early on, I can imagine that, or early in the, the game's lifespan, uh, I can imagine that some of it is very shuttily put together because they were, like, rushing everything out. Remember that, like, the marionette came out at the same time as the, the Triple Trouble boss. Like, yep. it, it, there were massive patches coming out, like, every other week, just, like, pumping, pumping, pumping. Um, a lot of it is not optimized. And Super Venture Box falls right into that category. Big along time. with a bunch of other stuff so yeah yeah and um oh my gosh i was gonna say something else on top of it but like Sorry. yeah they would like they would they would band-aid fix a lot of the stuff like in a raw specifically where like i literally at one point made a video that was an hour long that i emailed to arena nets like exploits email that doesn't apparently exist anymore but like i made a video walked through all of the bugs, all of the exploits, all of the like stuff in literally just one path. And it was an hour long with very <laughs> careful explanations and how to replicate everything and never got a reply. They like basically 80% of the stuff that you could do in that video that I put, like that I sent them, I just sent it privately to them. Like I didn't upload it anywhere. Like all of that stuff, like probably 85% of it, you can still do. Um, and they would put up invisible no. walls in places. You could literally, in some cases, jump on the wall uh, and then just jump over it. Like, just broken. Do you remember when they tried, they tried to do this? Um, do you guys remember the Spirit Veil skip you could do? Um, where you could, like, climb up and glide? And they thought they fixed it, but they didn't fix it. Because they put an invisible wall, but they put it in the wrong place. Like that. <laughs> nice. Ah, uh, that was well, fun. Do you, mean, do you mean with, like... Sabatha just ranging Sabatha down from no, the no, platform. No. Um, this was real old school, actually. Like back okay. uh, back in the day, you could skip, you could skip basically the entire um, circles event, right? Because what you could do is you would just um, you would climb. Oh up yeah, yeah. And yeah, you yeah. would you would portal people down. So you would like glide and you'd do mm -hmm. the entire event ahead of time and just like portal people there. Yeah, you could skip the champion. Yeah, you would skip the champion room. You you would set this up while you were doing portals, and then you would um you would do all the the circles and cap the circles, and then you would just port people immediately uh into the spirit run instantaneously. Basically, is what you would do. And yeah, there there was a. They they fixed it once, but that didn't fix it, and you could still do it. And then they fixed it again. I. <laughs> The, the range sound i didn't know they could even do this this is super interesting like the way they fix ranged um because uh, look this is this is this actually might be the biggest impact that i've had on the game certainly that i can confirm anyway mm -hmm. um because i made some youtube videos uh that arena actually told me to get rid of by the way um because they didn't like it you know well i've got to say i do find it a little bit funny that they said you made our game look broken like meanwhile you know i do whisper of jaw mag every day Wait, and which, i make their game look broken uh, I made I made um a range Veil Guardian, range Gorsival, and range Sabatha, uh, because on all of those bosses there is a place where you can stand with ten longbow rangers uh, and just auto attack the boss to death basically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and and the, the way they broken it's fine yeah the, the way they fixed it right the way they it was broken. super interesting like if you try and attack the boss from certain areas um then it actually interrupts you like you, if you try and use a skill there's like a there's like a, a rectangular area or like a cuboid area i suppose where if you try and use a skill, you get interrupted what? immediately. Yeah, like it, it, every t even an auto attack will get interrupted. It's like super interesting, like the way they fixed it. But yeah, it's fixed now. That's so cheesy. Fixed. Yeah, yeah. You used to be able to do that with a lot of stuff. Like you could auto attack Veil Guardian to death from underneath the map. There was a place you could fall in the water and sneak under, and you could just literally hit his feet, and the mechanics would never start. And like, like just meme, meme, full meme. Yeah, nothing would happen. And the the other bonus meme actually with with this is is that um you know the um Brazil you know the bug that you talked about for a really long time where you force a stance swap and you can use underwater skills on land. Oh yeah, engineer. Right? That one recently came up again with Mirage. <laughs> oh no, is they that the one where I they were one shotting can, in PvP? Yeah, I can talk yeah. about it now because it's fixed. Okay, because they fixed it, so I can talk about it. What was happening? And this is really interesting because this is a bug that Brazil was talking. You could do this with NG grenades because fun fact, guys, NG grenades underwater are target locked right you don't aim them they just like throw at your target and if you could force the stance on land you could have targeted grenades <laughs> that will like home in on people on land now they, they did actually fix well they kind of fixed this bug a little bit but what was happening is that for some bizarre reason underwater um in pvp only the jaunt skill was actually mirage mirror in other words dodge right and it had no cooldown <laughs> So what what certain players did was they forced underwater on land and they could use dodge with zero cooldown, right? And go completely invulnerable and nuke everyone as well because it was a weird version of the skill that did AoE damage as well. Uh, that recently was uh, kind of just being there. Oh yeah, our ape mode Sabatha. Yes, this is the classic. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm we, watching uh, the, the range strat. This is good. Yeah. I mean, do you enjoy that content, uh, Dura? You, I, enjoy, you, I enjoy that content. Yeah. I'm clicking the like button now. Yeah. It, it was it's doable. Like, um, it was doable since launch as well, by the way. Um, yeah, it was doable since launch. Um, like, but it just it just got fixed now. But there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I had some friends that were critical in helping me find some of those things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a friend that still, well, he doesn't really play anymore, but he would frequently solo the cannons on Sabatha. Um, <laughs> he would just uh, jump from one platform to the other and just yeah. solo them all as soon as they came up. I think that actually might not be fixed. You might still be able to do that, actually. Um, oh, I'm sure you can. Like, I'm, I'm totally sure you can still do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm confident in it, at least. The thing is, guys, with this is that it's actually not an easy mode. It is far harder to pull that off than to do Sabbath normally, right? Like because it's just so gimmicky. Like yeah, you you know you can do some you can do some really cheesy stuff like with with more exploity stuff. But honestly, the, all the ranged like wing one and stuff, it was way harder. Like the range veil guardian was bullshit. Okay, so on range VG, here's the thing. Like the reason why we were able to do range veil guardian is because Aegis actually blocks the spawn of the blue circles. But here's the thing, if we missed even one Aegis, everyone dies. Because in the spot that we were at there, if you move even one pixel, it instantly kills you. Like, the game <laughs> realizes that you're outside of the AoE, you die. So everyone had to stay pixel perfect, not moving in any way. So if, a, if even one blue spawned, it would instantly kill you. Because the act of the blue teleporting you kills you. Because it, you moved, right? So the second you moved, you died instantly. So actually doing that was way worse. Than, like, horrible strategy, right? But it was it was kind of funny to see how to do it. But there you go. Uh, we've kind of got sidetracked here a little bit. But yeah, there you go. That's kind of a fun thing about that. But what, what are you going to say about raids? Though? You think raids don't suffer from this issue? Like, less spaghetti than dungeons, Brazil? <laughs> oh, yeah. 100% they don't. And, like, I've had, I've had communication with uh, raid team members in the past. And, like, so Karen, whenever Karen was first came out... Um, Karen would teleport down players up into the air onto onto a platform and they would just float there like they were out in the ether or something but the platforms always existed and so you could just glide onto them and you could just range Karen you could literally just like solo range Karen down um and it was it was trivial to do so it was very easy um and so like I told one of the like I DM'd one of the uh, raid devs about it on Twitter, and they're like, "Could you show me?" Literally, like, went into the game with them, showed them how to do it, and they're like, "Oh, this is a problem," and they fixed it. Like, 
really quickly. Um, so like, I don't think that it's particularly difficult for them to change things in raids. And also like the devs were willing to do that because they cared about the content at the time. I don't know if that's still the case. Um, and obviously this was just whenever the first four were out and maybe things have changed with the development. I would have, I would think that it would have gotten easier and the tools would be better, but who knows? Um, and so like that was, that was a really big thing to me because all of the communication that like me or my guild had had in the past with dungeon devs, like I think it's COF path. Yeah. It's COF path Two, the one where the event where you just kite the mobs around for like 20 minutes and you just kill the mobs. We had complained about that to Robert Rhoda, the like old OG dungeon dev. And he was like, okay, I know how to fix it. And the way that he fixed it made everything worse and everyone hated it even more, and it took a while to do. And so we were just kind of like, uh, yeah, it's good. And that's all the feedback we gave him. And so, I don't know, like, I, I have a lot more faith in whatever is left of the raid team than I ever have in the dungeon team. Um, At least yeah. the raid team actually existed. Yeah, I mean, the so my understanding of the dungeon team is that they were immediately disbanded at launch and put on Living Story, or like what would become living story um, because like Robert Rhoda specifically, like one of the last things he ever did was stream like on the official ANET channel, South Sun Cove stuff. And like, that was, I think the last patch he was a part of pretty sure he made the Kanak fight where you like run Kanak over mines and stuff. I'm pretty sure he designed that. And that was the last thing he ever did at the company. Um, I think he either left or something after that, but he's not there anymore. And he like he he confirmed us that the dungeon team was literally disbanded on launch, and so I don't know it is what it is. I feel like we've gone down a big rabbit hole of uh, big bugs rabbit hole. and, uh, and yeah. other uh, other uh, Guild Wars Two lore, I guess development lore. That's what you, I mean, that's, it's classic tea time. I'm getting some. I'm feeling very you, nostalgic. Feeling very nostalgic yeah. here today, you know. <laughs> what do you guys think about the the marionette fight? We haven't talked about that, really. I tried it I once, know. and it failed, and I haven't bothered to ever go back again. Nice. I am actually I really... I'm impressed at how people learned it. Like, I have to say, I thought it would give people more trouble. Um, it definitely does give people trouble, 100%. I'm impressed how much Teapot cheated to... In order oh, to get it done. dude, it's... Do you know how... Do you guys know how much what you can you do? cheat? Do you know how much you well, can no. cheat in the public? Dude, the public is broken okay um because the instinct is different you can use teleport to friend so what i do when i join a public I is i yes. i i portal people um up to the platform every time basically uh, and um what i do is i join the squad right of e each lane will have its own squad in the public right so every time i join the squad i teleport to a friend up and then i uh teleport to a friend to anyone who's dead so i can teleport to every single platform so you can do every you can actually if you play correctly you can do every single boss and every single platform of every single boss using teleport to a friends you can completely <laughs> hard carry it like so you can ridiculous. you can Damn, literally dude. solo carry marionette in public with teleport to a friend that aside i thought it was yeah. really really great, <laughs> great I, giving I some think... uh, some agency to everyone involved i think yeah that, i think um, that's good yeah i think the fight needs <laughs> yeah. to be tuned a little bit in the sense of if a platform is empty for some reason, that it, it needs to allow players to portal over to that platform once their platform is clear. Because in several instances, it's possible, not just from trolling, but from DCing from the game or, or whatever happens where you just get an empty platform. Nobody's on it. Yeah. Where somebody was on it, they die, log out of the game, and now the platform is empty, right? And I just feel like in the yeah, public version or whatever, there, there should be a way for you to get to that platform without having to teleport to a friend, let's say. I think uh, even in like uh, the the non-public version, I think there, the, I mean, uh, right, I'm all I, for I, just yeah. some sort of catch-up mechanic because essentially it's like if you, if you have two people DC, it's kind of over. Like it's not over, obviously. It rolls over to the next lane. So it's, it's not entirely uh, impossible to do if one lane fails, but but still, it's like now they, yeah. the public's gone for now, but they are going to bring it back. They said, yeah. Um, I just hope that when they bring it back, that they consider something like that to help with 
it, it's one thing if you just fail because you didn't do the mechanics or you didn't bring CC, which for some reason players refuse to have any crowd control on their bar whatsoever. I don't know why, but they refuse for some reason. If people refuse to change their build. Uh, period. Gosh, it's, it's they, I mean, it's so easy. They could just buy templates and immediately change it. Boom. Problem solved. I, I think it's just because you know, swipe that card. I think the, the event thing for me was the two-hour timer. Was I get it? It sinks in with the other world bosses or something, and you're supposed to go off and do other things. But when you're just trying to do that event because it's only around for one week in the public, and you fail because people didn't bring CC, it's aggravating to have to wait two hours to try again. Mm. I think there are certainly some cracks in the event, right? Like it, it's, it does. I think the really bad thing about it is that you are so dependent on everyone succeeding. I don't necessarily view that as a, I don't necessarily view no, that I as like horribly be, bad. It's yeah, just that I, I think actually that, really like it because it's the first, first time where we really see some great splits of like groups. It's something that I've been ab advocating for uh, in raids for the longest time that where it hasn't really succeeded. There's always a way around any kind of split that happens in in raid encounters but here it's you're you're very hard forced it, unless you're using teleport to friends of course of course um but you're very hard forced to give everyone agency and everyone it needs to pull their weight and i really i encourage that i love that but obviously it has some drawbacks when you're putting it into uh, well yeah this community i guess um, I think this is this is why the public works pretty well, right? Because at least with the public, you have like three people on each platform. I just think with two yeah. people, uh, certainly in the private, the private definitely suffers from this a lot because if you don't have 50 people, it's probably going to be very scuffed. Like you need to have exactly 50. And if anyone disconnects, like it's like, oh, like you're at a significant disadvantage right now. Like if even one person DCs or if like two people leave, like you're in big trouble now, which I think is like, ah. I yeah. know, like, that's kind of a problem, and I get that they can't make it any, they can't change that, they can't add more than 50 people, because the squad is limited to 50 people, obviously, but I think that it, it's, there are certainly some things where the design does buckle and break a little bit, I think it's fine in the public, though, like, I, I agree, I agree with you there, Dora, I think, in the public, because it's just like, you've got 80 people, if three of you can't kill a champion, then you deserve to lose, Yeah, I said it, there we go, right, boom, Yeah. yeah. particularly seeing as, um, I actually think it could be really good for the community, because well, maybe I'm being incredibly optimistic here, but the win condition for basically all of them is break the bar, right? Like, if you break the bar, you're almost certainly going to win, right? Like, on basically all the bosses. Certainly on the first boss, uh, the third boss, the fourth boss. Not so much the fifth boss, because that one is a little bit, it can definitely mean people pretty hard. But in a way, like that one too, it actually teaches people about CC a little bit. Because if you use blinds and stuff like that, kind of like, you know, dungeon star, right? If you have like a pulsing blind field, like the final boss is way easier as well. So, I don't know, like, it, it could maybe kind of get people to think about how they play the game a little bit more when they want to go for the marionette. I think they should buff the rewards, though, too, actually. I, I think um, having the marionette, like, be, like, a daily routine for loads of players, I think it would be super cool, actually. I think it would be really good. Um, like, I think it, if it kind of fell into, like, the world boss meta train, that stuff is actually great. Like, having world bosses that kind of require you to think a little bit, right, and you actually have to understand what's going on. I think that sort of stuff is really good for the game. I'm actually really hyped for the expansion if they do some stuff like this, right? Like, if they actually try and make some events that have a bit more to them and have a fail state. Because think about it, like, you know, no other world boss really has this. Like, what world boss outside of, like, Triple Trouble is failable? Like, basically none of them. Uh, um, you know. Oh, Drakkar. Drakkar is failable. Too. All of the Heart of Thorns ones? Wait, are they Dragon failable? Stand, Dragon Stand is fail. Like, Dragon Stand constantly fails on NA. Yeah. Chuck Jaren <laughs> constantly fails. Yes, it fails on NA all the time. I haven't um, failed in a long time. The only one that I don't, I, like, I haven't seen fail is like Verdant Brink. And like, I don't think anyone does that. But like, when I was playing on NA for a while, like, oh my God, I was just trying to do like one of my favorite things to do in this game is to do Dragon Stand and listen to the Cure's Disintegration album, start to finish, and just reminisce about happy memories. It's like my favorite thing to do in this whole game. And like, boy, let me tell you, when we got to the Blighting Pods and the Commanders and we fucking failed, I'm just like, I hate this album, I hate this game, I hate having fun, I want to die. Like, <laughs> let me tell you something. Like, that was a rude awakening. And I tried Chalk Jarrett. I had to get egg sacks for something and i was doing chalk jaren and literally like half of them failed like half of them failed it was horrible it's yeah. horrible good thing i'm not on na anymore 
And yeah, NA is. Please buff NA. Like the only, the only thing that fails on NA is when Nike goes to Octovine and one turn burns it, and none of the other lands are ready. <laughs> Good. That, that killed disbanded. The, yeah. the frogs disbanded. Right. That was that's big. I mean, yeah, Dra Dragon Sun does fail if it's, like, really early. Like, if it's, like, super early, then, yeah, Dragon Sun gets farmed. Like, that is true. Uh, but, I mean, like, it, it's just because that event, it's just, it, I think a lot of people don't really do it, like, in the main cycle. But I, I, feel, I feel like, I, look, I know, listen, team, I have personally know that NA failed the Piñata twice. Okay, but come on. Like, we can't, we can't just say that NA fails all the Piñatas and all the Octomines because of this, guys. Okay, this isn't true. No, they yeah. fail. Like, these are events... When Octavine was new, and like all this stuff was new, it took like two weeks for people to figure out. Like it probably took like a month for people to figure out Chalk Jarrett, which is totally fine. Um, like I'm, I'm totally down for stuff like that. But like once people figured the stuff out, like pretty much they they succeeded. Um, I think one problem is that people don't want to tag up and don't want to be commanders um, because they just want to like AFK lazy through it. And one of the things that like. I did. I was like, oh, I'm not going to get my fucking chalk eggs if I don't just like suck it up and make a squad and lead one of the lanes. It's not going to happen. That's not hard to do. Like, you just need to have a tag visible on the map so people go over there. And whenever you have too many, tell them all to go to Scar or whatever. But I think that's just a problem. Like, people taking an initiative, I think, is a problem because they don't have any sense of like, they, they're like, they think that they should just auto attack and win the game. Well, and like I think like I, stuff like Marionette, I hope really challenges that. Well, I, I think this is kind of the problem with with Guild Wars Two. This is definitely like a very a very tea timey topic here. I think yeah, the game yeah. just I think the game just gives you horror. Just doesn't really give you any kind of feedback, right, on if you're doing well or not. Um, it does. You know, yeah. It when when you're Matt playing. No, they won't though. They actually yeah, won't. Sure, that, they will. Th no, they won't. They'll scream and yell at you that you're an idiot and where's your CC? Yeah, yeah, but they, I mean, they that maybe they will, right? Um, but I don't think they actually do very oh, they often, will. right? Um, wait, do they? <laughs> I, what I if you don't know what CC is or break bars? Yeah. What if you don't know how it works? <laughs> I'm not even sure if it's taking initiative. Like the the thing is with with this guy, like to be a little bit more sympathetic to the to the people gamer, right? Like in Guild Wars Two. You can win by doing nothing for 99% of the game. The big potato, the wooden potato man, the star, 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 and then six stars in a row, man. Okay, this guy did the story with literally no weapons equipped. Okay, he did the entire story with just the pet soloing everything. Like, the game does not That's fight okay. back. Right, like you know, like Guild Wars Two for most of the game does not fight back. Look, if you watch all streamers, guys, okay, when you watch streamers, watch Mella. He does chat Garen every day, and he just sets his accounts. He has three accounts doing it, right, and he just auto attacks, right, the entire time. Like you know, uh, Pang does this too. Pang will set his accounts up to auto attack the chat Garen and auto attack the Octovine and do nothing. Like most of the game is an auto attack simulator so when a player if a player's going oh this is how you win the game right this is how you win because this is what they've been doing the entire time they've been pressing their buttons like you know just seeing what happens and they win and they get no negative feedback that this is a you know they're fucking this up basically they're not doing very well then well of course when they actually encounter something that requires not auto attacking then they're going to have a lot of difficulty right because they just don't understand they don't know what they're supposed to be doing because they've never had anything that kind of prompts them to think about what's going on there it doesn't help that a lot of things are kind of like listen okay team you know what i'm just gonna say it again like where is where is my purple text on cc skills in guild wars 2 because this is actually a huge issue i 100 guarantee you that most players don't even know what a break bar is okay because tell me where okay team where in the game does it tell you that a break bar you do the blue bar is you do cc to damage it Okay, where in the game does it say that? Like, maybe I'm it does. Potatoes is channel now. Yeah, maybe it does say that somewhere, but it doesn't. I don't think it does. Okay, right. Well, to nowhere. be fair, to be fair, the the couple of attempts that I did on Marionette, everybody in chat were communicating what people needed to do before the fight started, and the people in the map just they don't listen. So. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that even if you uh, like, how much more do you need 
to be told how to do something if you're just going to ignore it and not listen anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like you're saying that you don't get feedback, but I don't know. I've seen plenty of instances where people are trying to explain the fight, explain what to do, um, why things are not going so well in the middle of the fight without being you know, rude and calling people names and so forth. And they just ignore it, and then the event fails. So, I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I, think, I, of I course. think there's a portion of the player base that refuses to listen, won't listen no matter what you tell them, and refuse to learn how to do certain things. This is true. This is the case in every... Obviously, like, you're always going to have this, like, group of people that are very, very lazy. But I think just having some level of awareness of how the game works will be so huge, right? Don't you think? I just think that most players just have no idea what they're doing and they don't even know if they're doing well or not. They probably assume that they are doing a good job. Look, I can almost guarantee you, right? Um, if if I go and talk to like an average like little 2K DPS people in open world and I say, hey, you know, do you think you're, you know, do you think you're doing a good job? He'd say yes, right? In reality, the answer is no, obviously. Like, he's, he's doing nothing, right? Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, most people go, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay, right? I'm doing all right, um, you know, with, with the game. But no, like most people play incredibly badly, right? Um, and, you know, and look, here's a great example. Um, yeah, this, uh, thank you for bringing up Freezy. Uh, yeah, check this out, actually. Um, yeah, Delay brings up this great example. I did a Freezy. You guys know the Freezy event, right? Like the Winter's Day Strike mission? And I did a, a, a Strike... And there was a Chronomancer there. And he did 600 DPS. <laughs> nice. Okay. And Bit, he said... And afterwards... Afterwards, I asked him, like, you know, what, what kind of build? He said, yeah, I went full DPS for that. I went full dps i didn't go for any boon up time because you know i wait no he said that i don't need the boon duration for this so i went full dps and then he linked me his gear and he had um full ram rampager gear on like rampager gear and wait i think it was balthazar rune and he was like just auto attacking on scepter the entire time and he was full dps i have a better if he even hit 600 then I have a better example of this with a visual <laughs> along with um, and this is this is so ridiculous. I want to make every like this is this screenshot is ancient and the person that took it is not playing the game anymore, okay? This is this is so crazy to the point where I don't even know if it's ironic or not. I don't like I don't <laughs> know. This is so bad. Um, but here you go. It's in chat right now. This will change your life when you see this screenshot. This <laughs> will change this your whole life. This is a life-changing screenshot. <laughs> so yeah, th this is this is one of the uh, the classic uh, classic gear check images here, guys. Okay, like one guy saying that you know he you know he, make sure everyone has the right gear on, make sure everyone has good DPS, and then he himself is like rampager and like rabid gear. Okay, uh, the also, runes don't even match. Yeah. Yeah, he has random runes. He has two runes of the thorn, then two. Wait, is that two rare runes of Grant? Rare, yeah, rare yeah, yeah. runes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Damn, He's got... I miss being able to see the HP. Yeah. Oh my god, that takes <laughs> yeah. me back. That's good. Yeah, that is some uh, that's some big gameplay there, guys. Okay, that is yeah. He's got plus tens as well. Plus ten infusions. There's a lot going on there, guys. Okay, there's a lot of content. That's Renji. Well, no, Renji just doesn't have runes or sigils, right? Okay, like that's that's the thing. Can right? I can I Renji. can I actually talk about that too? Uh, this, is that something? Yes, because this is 100% like the absolute crux of the issue. No, I think, okay, to be clear, I think Renji does actually meme a little bit about this. I don't think it's entirely, he's not in, I don't think he's actually as clueless as he makes out actually. But yeah, Brazil, let, uh, give us the rundown here. <laughs> I went to raid with Renji the other day. And Renji is already a, a unique person. Because like, he somehow wins every single pvp game he has and he runs around camps out with deadeye basically playing call of duty and when he manages to get a one shot he runs over and dances on the person that's all he does in his pvp games and like me like i try as hard as possible and i go on 10 game losing streaks and i don't understand it and like i don't understand it i don't understand how it happens yeah, th I, this is the conclusion that I came to. I was playing wrong because my focus is actually on winning and not just on having fun and making memes. That's how you win PvP. But Rinji and I went to raid, and 
my da- my, my damage on I think it was it was on some support class. Like I don't know if it was a lacrigade, but it was something. It was his damage is like a full DPS dead eye was considerably lower than mine was, like by a large margin. And outside of like the the healer, he was the lowest DPS in the group. And so I asked him, I was like, what's up with your like build and stuff? He didn't have runes. He didn't have sigils. All of his stats were not DPS stats. And he didn't think you needed to have them in PVE because he thought they were PVP only. He thought they were only significant to have in PVP because like that's where all of your stats came from. He thought that they were completely optional in PVE and they didn't matter. Now, here's the thing. I actually don't believe him um, because I know I know for an absolute fact that he geared out his build from snowcrows.com. I know that for a fact, okay, that he looked at this, but there are definitely players who would think like that, okay? They, like, just, just to, I'm calling out Renji there, okay? I know for a fact that he, that isn't true to an extent uh, because he, he understands how builds work uh, because he, he looks at these, you know, looks at the build websites and he was even talking about like having like accuracy sigil like on his mesmer for like, extra crit. So like this is like, eh, it is there, but no, like, like listen, that's just a quick thing there, but it is true. I think a lot of players, I mean, look, it's clear that people don't understand this, right? Like if you, if I you, have hundreds of screenshots. Yeah, that show that it's clear exactly. That yeah. There's hundreds of screenshots, right? Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's it, setting up your gear is something that players do struggle with. They do get lost on it for sure. Actually 100%. Yeah. It's just like from the era of gear check and the wild west of DLLs and stuff that you could add to the game. Like it was like, I don't, for like for most of the content it doesn't matter what you have it doesn't matter it just doesn't matter but like if you try to go do raids you can't have on like rare gear and masterwork gear with runes that don't match and like stuff that's under level 80 and there are people that have done that like there are people that like have gone into raids like with builds like that and they just get yelled at and chewed out i've i don't think i've ever seen anyone go into a raid and do horrible damage and anyone like say like hey like i have extra gold i will mail you gear and i will help you get a good build like occasionally people just say go to snow crow's idiot and kick them and like that's feedback like i guess but it's it's just i don't see i see the problem a lot or i did see the problem a lot you would say but i saw very few people if any try to do anything to be kind and fix it and that was very disappointing very disheartening so let's talk solution then for something like the marionette how do you solve the problem of people not understanding that you need to bring cap crowd control skills uh, I think that you, you you need to have an NPC yelling at them to. I, I think do you just so, need. To, or... I think you gotta you gotta telegraph in the game like fucking. You gotta like yell like this is a the blue bar, CC. I think telegraph what skills have CC right. Um, you could even have it on the tooltip saying that this will do damage to break bars right. Like there should be like a big thing that says this is what this is, uh, you know, and how how it operates. I think that's like the big thing. I, I think players just don't know what. I mean, I, I think that's helpful to have some, like you said, something on the skill itself that says this will, uh, you know, this is a CC ability or, or whatever the case. I is. mean, wasn't wasn't that the whole? Most people like, don't read the skills, reason, but wasn't, wasn't that helpful. the whole reason why we started out getting uh, special action skills? Essentially, it was like giving kind people of. an extra skill all the time when it's supposed to be used. Yeah, but the, the, the trouble the is they, they do bound. they they do <laughs> use it, but they don't know why. Like I I, yeah. I predicted this to happen. Like so, yeah, people use the action key, but that's because they think the action key breaks the bar. They don't actually know why it breaks the bar, right? They, they go, oh, when the when the when you have this when you see the break bar, use the action key. But that's that's the wrong thought, right? Like the correct thought is use cc when you see the break bar the the special action hockey is a cc therefore i should use it to on the break bar but the trouble is is that the way arena set it up it it skips that really important set they don't understand why they're using that skill that's why i i i absolutely hate the masters i actually think the masteries in ice Rude saga did the opposite i think they actually made the cc worse um because now players 
think that the way you break bars is using the special action or key instead of actually using their abilities, which it just, it kills me, man. You know what? This, if this was toggleable, I 100% think you should do this, by the way. Like, um, when there's a break bar up, yeah, it should actually, like, highlight skills that do CC. And it should, like, say, use that, use that, use that, use that. Like, 100%, yeah. Um, I think other games kind of do this too, actually. I think there's a lot of games that kind of have this, like, weird system where it will, your UI will change based on that. As long as you can disable it, I think that would be a good idea, actually. That would be interesting to see, like, if that would actually Right, help. so that's the key, to give yeah. the player an option to disable it if they want to, but yeah. to have it on by default. Because at, because at the very least, maybe a player would say, I wonder why that button turns green at this point of the fight yeah. or something. Why is that? Like, you know, like it, it will kind of get why them... Why is that happening? It will get them on the road, right? Like, they'll start thinking yeah, about, maybe. like, why? Maybe like, why, you know, why would... Why is this skill glowing? Like, what's going on there? Like, why is it telling part, me to do that? Like, there's a part of me that's like... You don't need to hold their hand that much, but the reality is you do. I have no issues with uh, with that happening at all. Um, mm -hmm. If I could actually bring it back to something real fast, Sarah oh, made a really go. good point in the chat that I haven't thought of ever. Um, she said that in other games, people go into raids to get gear. Like, that's the point of going into raids. So, like, I, I don't know if people are applying that same mindset to Guild Wars 2. Where they think just like the gear that they find through leveling like in also here's the thing that like so gear in guild wars 2 like if there's a higher stat number of some stat than what you have on your gear it will like highlight it green and the other ones will, will be red so like the game could just be telling you that like you're comparing something that's should not be like if you're comparing like rampagers to like berserkers they do completely different things like if it says it has more precision and you want a higher crit chance because you want to do more damage and all you're thinking is crit chance, what if it's telling you that and, like, you get confused? Like, that's kind of weird. And, like, what if you think, yeah, like, I want in-game gear, but I don't want to raid, so, like, this stuff is fine because this is what the game has given me. And, like, I got it through leveling up. I got it through the level-up rewards. I didn't really look at it, but, like, this is okay. And, like... I wonder, like, how much that's actually factoring into it, too. Because, like, me, like, I've known what gear to get and what builds to use since, like, 2012. And, like, after I figured it out the first time, like, it's been something that I pushed out of my head because I understood how it's work. But, like, other people that are coming into the game and that are new, like, I guess that they could just be having that experience for the first time and they don't know and there's nothing in the game that shows them. Like, it just seems like it could be in the level up reward gear, like, isn't even, like, the gear isn't even, and the stats aren't even particularly useful. They just do random stuff. They don't tell you that it's good for a condition damage build. They don't tell you what traits go well with it. They don't tell you any of that stuff. They just give you shit, and they tell you that you're level 50 now. Like, I think that could, I mean, like, honestly, just thinking about that, that's just a giant failure. Hmm. I think the gearing system does confuse people. And I, I, I oh, I, I think you could actually do this. I would be really tempted to actually try and do this myself, actually, uh, as like a programming experiment. I think you could definitely do it. If someone wants a challenge, guys, try and do this. I'd be super curious if anyone can do it. I think you could, though. Um, I think you could write a script that would tell you what gear you should use. And that's 100% doable. If you input in um, weapons, I can almost guarantee you that it will be fairly easy to write a piece of code that would tell you what it is so you could have a piece of code that will look at all the tooltips right and look at all the power scalings all the conditions that get applied and it could probably figure out like what you should use right like it, it, it should be able to say and say okay right necromancer scepter it would go okay this applies bleeding uh more bleeding torment right this is a condition damage weapon it, it should say okay it's going to be like 90 percent condition damage here 10 percent power Therefore, you should use condition damage gear if you're using this weapon, right? And then that would be like a good start, right? You said that you couldn't tell the optimal build. Yeah, it can't tell you the optimal build. It's you're not. Oh my god! Okay, ban him. Ban him. Ban him. I no. I don't want to read his comments anymore. No, obviously. Now you can't find the optimal build. Okay, but it will tell you if it should be conditional power damage. Okay, which is not the same thing. Like it's it, it's not going to be able to. It's not going to be able to spit out like oh use full viper gear right and also use like lich runes or or crate runes or nightmares. It won't be able to tell you that. 
right? Okay. And also, by the way, you can find the optimal build. Uh, you can optimize for damage. We were talking about something entirely different. Okay. Oh, holy shit. He's trolled me, but I have to respond to this because otherwise I'm going to get mad, right? We were talking about the optimal balance between survivability and DPS loss, which is not the same thing as optimizing. You can go on the SC website and it will optimize the build for you easily, right? That's trivial. Okay. Uh, but Again, we're not even talking about optimization. We're talking about a heuristic that will determine if you should be using condition damage or like kind of what type of gear. Not even like Viper or Rabid. Like, should it be Condi or Power? Like at least a start, right, of what you could use. You know, the weird thing is the answer is always Celestial now. Nice. <laughs> Celestial. Dude, Sally is so OP now. Like, it's actually insane. What? Like, what if you could just yeah. download builds from and like mm -hmm. add them to the build templates, like you could in Guild Wars One? Like that would probably just make everything easier. Well, you kind, you kind of can. I, I mean, you can link them in chat. Yeah, you, you kind of, you can pay like copy a code and then like take the build, but not gear, obviously. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think I, I th th no, because the thing is, guys, it's got to be in game. Listen, okay, team, I'm gonna give you the ultimate like Omega take it. Like, wh why is it that um, I mean, look at a game like World of Warcraft. In WoW, you can't make bad decisions, right? And, and this is this. Is, I know this is like are you, a lot of you guys might find this depressing or sad, but wake up, sheeple. Okay, like this is reality. Like in WoW, the game doesn't even let you make bad decisions. Like when you get a piece of gear, it will work for your spec. Like whatever spec you have, it will work. I think gear even changes. Like if you change spec, like the stats on it will change to make sure that it's good no matter what. Like this is how much of a problem this is for players. Like understanding how all the systems works, guys. Like you cannot actually make bad decisions in that game. And by the way, that's not me roasting WoW. That's a compliment of WoW, guys. Okay. Like this is actually a good part about WoW that it won't let you make like horrible choices. Not entirely true, but it's somewhat true. Yeah, obviously there's going to be an optimal build in WoW, but the thing is it won't let you be horrible. For example, if I play um full Berserker Scourge, right, and I'm playing Scepter, right, that is incomprehensibly wrong, okay? Like, that is so fucking bad, right, that you're going to be borderline useless. Like, particularly if you end up then picking really bad traits, right, and really bad runes, and really bad utility skills. Like, World of Warcraft will not let you be as bad as a Carrion Longbow Ranger. A Carrion Longbow Ranger, right, like, is so much worse than any decision you could make in WoW. That there is no decision in WoW that you can make. My build? I mean, are you into that stuff? Are you into, um, that's Why are you trashing my Carrion Long Ranger build? Yeah. Me and Kitty Plays are, are... Yeah. Oh, damn, that's the name I haven't heard in a long while. Yeah. Thank yes. God. Uh, 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 Carrion Longbow Rangers, the classic build. <laughs> I, well, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. I, I, I have an idea too, but if you were still going, I'd like you to finish. Oh no, no, I'm, no, I'm basically done. I'm just saying that you know okay. like, this is a big problem because uh, I see a lot of people in the chat, Brazil. They're saying that they're saying like, oh, how can they be this stupid? How can they possibly not? Under like, how can they be this dumb? Well, listen, guys. Okay, you got to understand. Like, we need to be empathetic to these players. Like these players, yeah. you know, like we look. We are supposed to be the players who guide these players, who try and advocate to help these players to understand the game. If players aren't understanding the game, they're probably at some point going to experience some kind of frustration when they bash into a raid or a fractal or. What whatever, right? At some point, they're going to experience a frustration because they don't understand. We are the ones who are supposed to be helping these people. We're the ones who are supposed to actually, in a way, be advocates for these players who don't understand and have difficulty with the game. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like something else that came to mind during that whole discussion is like in League of Legends, the item shop basically just tells you what to build. It gives you a bunch of items and it tells you which ones are good and like which ones you should pick. And League of Legends at the beginning did not do that. Like, you could just buy whatever the fuck you want, and you didn't know if it was good or bad. Like, you would build six guardian angels on Ramus, and you didn't die. So, like, that made sense, right? You don't die, so you're contributing something. Um, and then the opposite extreme of that was, like, the actual correct build to play on Mordekaiser was six gun blades. And that's just, like, you're not experimenting <laughs> with any other variety. But, like, they could totally integrate something like that into the trading post, because you can already filter by like weapons that only your class can use you can already filter by like exotic by stats you can pick all of that stuff so like i don't know why you like maybe they don't want to force people to play particular builds but you could definitely have like a filtering system that's like i want to do power damage 
I want to do condition damage. I want to be a tank. And it could only show you gear relative to that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I think that is the thing. And I understand that they, you're, I think you're right there, Brazil. I don't think they like forcing oh people also, down this. Oh, Wait, oh, 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 okay. oh you got? here's another thing. Like oh, in the, oh, 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 in the level 80 boost instance, like they give you like, so when you get a reward from raids, like weapons or something, you have like assaulters chest, malicious chest, like healers chest and defenders chest. They all give you different stat sets. There's some overlap between them. But like, why couldn't they just give you shit like that in the starter instance, like in Queensdale, like a mighty chest, uh, like condition damage chest, or like in the level 80 boost, they could just give you like four things to pick from and then you could figure out what to do and it could tell you traits that work with it. Like you could totally do something like that. You well, could totally just get people started in the right direction very easily. Some, some of the, the starter builds are not bad. Like the Necromancer one's pretty decent, right? It gives you like rabid gear, which is pretty decent actually. Um, but they could definitely do a little bit better with like the starter gear, right? They could give you, say, like Marauder gear for power builds. They could give you, uh, you know, like a rabbit or, or even they could even give you like Trailblazer for some Connie builds, right? That that would certainly be a thing there too. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like th this is definitely a big problem, guys. Like, you know, like I think, uh, you know, I, I don't want to talk on this for too long because we've been going for a while. And that's like, I kind of want to wrap things up here actually uh for the tea time so we'll probably conclude it like this is definitely a topic for another one though guys okay stay tuned for more okay for the next tea time there's uh there's something for sure there as well but it, this is definitely guys make no mistake right accessibility in guild wars 2 is fucking bad it's one of the game's biggest weaknesses which is incredibly ironic considering it's very casual audience okay all right that's it it's done final takes on that then we're wrapping it up i'm good i don't have anything to say Okay, Dariah, tell us how wrong we are. Just call us bad or something. We need you to be no, Brazil. No, it was all good. I, I I love you guys. I can't I can't be mean just like off the top of my head. No, I don't, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I don't okay. do that. You were great. You had a you had a great rant. I love it. Yeah. I love to see it. In that case, it is time to uh, actually wrap things up here for this tea time. Okay. Let's go for this stuff here. Okay, then let's see. What order should we do this in? Wait, what order do I have it in the title? That's what I'm going to do it, you know. I, I can't be bothered to decide it's on the fly right now. Deroya Brazil. Oh, There's it's no, Deroya no first oh. then, okay? There's no comma because you don't deserve one. I will add Apparently, one now. Though. Better I am late than Brazil. never. There we go. All right, <laughs> here we go. Let's roll. So, Deroya, the legendary man, the man who is the purplest person on the entire planet. Part Tell of us the who you are. Point zero zero eight percent. Let's go. Feels kind of bad, man. Not gonna lie. Uh, don't try hard, kids. Um, I think that'll that'll be my message for the day. Yes, I am. I am Troyer, <laughs> and uh, I I do the stuff. I'm ready for updates and all the jazz. Yes, awesome. This was fun. I think I'll I think I'll wrap it up by saying this was awesome. I'm I'm always enjoying uh, just chatting with you guys. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love to hear it, yeah. Don't get tried, really otherwise ArenaNet right will now. send you more items that you already have. Uh, so there I is that. Like, I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm slacking so hard on, on the stuff that I should be shilling, so I'm not actually yeah. going to shill anything. Wow, um, whoa! Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. We I'm can't expect gonna... any Deroya content? No, no, no Deroya well, content not, uh, anytime soon? Well, not really Deroya, but like, it's all the other stuff that I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I, I have, I'm not putting anything out right now, so wow. it's like, yeah. But I actually, I well, technically, I do have a like huge shoot like plan for uh, August, so uh, stuff oh. will be coming. Oh, um, okay, and, okay. And, and, yeah, I'll be sharing that. But all yeah. right, all right, all right. For now it's like I'll I'll just leave it with love you guys hard. Okay. And then next up, the one of the the longest arcs in Guild Wars Two history, all the way from elitist and back again. It's Brazil, aka. Underworld video underscore Preston. Educate Hi. us about yourself. Uh, so I do a couple of things now. Um, per <laughs> wow, I already fucked up that. <laughs> Photography has been one of my <laughs> biggest pursuits having like, you know, left the game for a while. And I found a lot of what I was doing unfulfilling and what my kind of primary goal and I guess you might even say purpose in life I felt over the past few months has been... Um, trying to document and help out the homeless situation because here in the U S and in Texas and California stuff's a little fucked up right now. We have a lot of homeless people that, um, are 
really in a bad way. And so I'm trying to do what I can to help out and to, I, I don't want to say bring awareness to the situation. It's more like I want to fucking put the situation in your face so you can't ignore it because it's really hard and it's really rough. Um, so that's my goal right now. Um, if you're interested in checking out any of my photography, uh, checking out what I'm doing, you can just go to underworldvideo.com. It's my website. Um, UWV, UWV underscore Preston on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and you can check me out there on Twitch also. I stream Divorce 2 a little bit. But also, um, I set up a Patreon recently. It's not for me. Um, I'm not keeping any of the money from that. If you guys are interested in checking it out, you can just go to patreon.com slash underworldvideo. The whole point of that project is just to get some donations from people. And like, I'm just going to give it straight back to homeless people. Like if I get 20 bucks a month, I'm going to go buy a guy a burger and a bottle of water, talk with them for a little bit and give them the rest of it in cash. Um, if I get $10,000 a month or a million dollars a month, it's going to suck not keeping it. <laughs> but like, I'm going to literally, like, I'm going to put it, like, I'm going to give it to people and I'm going to help them out. Um, I'm going to, like, I record stuff like this. I've got a YouTube channel, which there's a video on my Patreon that's linked to that. Um, you can just check out what I'm doing. Um, I just want to, I spent a long time complaining and being pissed off. I realized that there are people that don't even have a voice to complain and I want to do something about that. So it's pretty much it for me. Oh. Um, pretty much it. Thank you. That is very wholesome indeed. Yeah. And yeah. finally, Inks, tell us about your GPU Bitcoin mining operation <laughs> to kind of like really kind of keep the tone in the same vein there. Well, actually, I, I, you guys have been joking about that, but I sold both of the rigs. Oh, wow. So, oh, damn. Wow. I'm just, what? To, I'm just down to the computers now. Yeah. 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 Why did you sell so, them? <laughs> good money, I guess. Yeah, I got a good offer, and um, there you go. Just well, really that simple. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to Swing. Tuesday. Oh, yeah. On another topic. Oh, I almost um, forgot. Sorry. You want to go another, go on and go another hour, guys, real quick? Like another hour? Like a podcast? Yeah. Bird, yeah, Bird yeah. of Chess has dethroned wooden potatoes for the pre-show. So yeah. that should be good. And <laughs> poor wooden potatoes. Sorry, WP. You've been dethroned. And um, yeah, Tuesday should be good. Lots of information. End of Dragons, new trailer, elite specs. I hope should be. Good I stuff. love how we didn't at all talk about Tuesday. We like mentioned it for a second, and now yeah. this is bringing it up here at the end. Damn. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to Tuesday. Tuesday should be good. Yeah. Exciting. Been looking forward to it for a couple of months now, and so that's my big hype is waiting for news on Tuesday to then talk about everything they show us i can't good. wait to get spear yeah oh are you a spear believer you're a spear believer Dorian? oh yeah definitely oh. wow we should have talked about this because whichever Dorian's full of baloney it's a <laughs> dagger i'm sorry oh i'm sorry I spear lovers i'm sorry i don't care if that one's a dagger a spear, but someone's gonna get a spear and i'm going wow. to my main profession to whatever wow gets that spear. Oh, that okay spear. i'm going for it okay, i'm going man. hard for it or that try it. is an I'll take one. a trident as well. Very interesting one. Well, okay, oh. hey, you know, maybe we can get like a live tea time reaction or something like that. I'll just call everyone uh, everyone up there and we'll just all like Honestly, yell it at the fun. entire time, okay? Like, we'll, we'll get like a proper watch party going, guys, there, so we can enjoy it together. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, tea time is kind of back a little bit here. I'm not sure if it'll be every week. It'll be kind of like whenever I feel like it's worth doing is when we'll do tea time. So I'm not going to commit to doing it every week. I do actually like doing the podcast. Like this is normally my day off, right? Like Wednesday is normally my day off. So kind of getting it in there. Maybe I'll take, maybe I'll change my day off to Sunday, move the podcast to Sunday, right? And then just stream on Wednesday as normal there as well. So I don't know. We'll find out. Like I'll figure something out there because obviously doing it on Wednesday is kind of weird, right? It's a weird day to do it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it will be making its return and you'll see it popping up a little bit more often there because I do enjoy the podcast, right? It feels damn good. But anyway, okay, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Okay, I actually will probably go and play some Guild Wars 2 in New World. I'll play Guild Wars 2 and, and then Q for New World at the same time and go hunt some turkeys with Jester today. But, okay, the podcast is now over. It's over. Okay, so go and follow everyone. There'll be links in the description of the video. You can see them below the stream as well. Go click on them right now. Okay, get over there right now, guys. Get involved there. Get in the mix. Okay, and obviously, thank you to my wonderful guests for joining me here today to discuss various exciting topics about Guild Wars 2. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more from them very, very soon. Of course, guys, follow the stream and subscribe there as well because I love money, right? And uh, I think that, you know, in addition to giving it to the homeless, you should also give it to me. 
There you go. Or else T Bot will be homeless. Spoken like a true Brit. Yep, exactly. I love it. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye. In the mists. Bye. Okay, boom. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, Al.